these suckers out of ball out here. Oh, man, let's get this together here. Oh, layup. Oh, shot. Oh, three. Three. Oh, it's like Brick City out here. Mid-range. Oh, my goodness. I can't buy a bucket out here. I missed the whole damn basket. Oh, my goodness. What's going on, man? My game is looking trash. Right. Oh, here we go. Black Power Media shirt. Now we cooking. Now we cooking. Tree. Tree. I'm taking on tree of y'all with these right here. Between the legs. Oh, my goodness. Behind the back. Layup. Oh, and then he just threw a reverse. He is in beast mode out here. I ain't got to look. It's falling. Oh my goodness, this guy is going three, two, one. Kobe! Nice. Black Power Media, baby. Nice. Empower yourself. Go get me some of that Black Power Media again. Right here, blackpowermedia.org. Yep. You got to earn your liberation. Yes, yes, yes. What's up, world? Welcome back to another episode of Earn Your Liberation. Geechee Y'all, Jared Ball, Yo, no. Diallo on the way. What's up? What's happening? Cooler, man. How you feeling? I'm as good as could be expected. I'm as good as could be expected. What's up, world? What's up to the remixers filing in? Good to see you this morning. Please like, share, subscribe. Let others know to join you. Put this in your socials. Don't be stingy with it. And uh got a big show for the day yeah a whole lot to. going on man and then uh uh and a lot going on on the platform today too so after this show we got so first of all another brokish episode just dropped i just i was just now seeing that uh so that's dope and then we got uh, my my sister uh, Sugar Sugar is coming through at one o'clock to talk more about this endlessly terrible film claiming to be about Bob Marley. Then at seven o'clock tonight, Black Myths drops their constructive critique of BPM. And speaking of constructive criticism. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My, my tardiness. We wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, oh, okay. What would it what would it look like if you showed up on time? What would it 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 it, it, it kills the drama. You wouldn't be Diallo if you showed up on time. Zone. You said it every time. I was, in, I, I was, in, an hour, I'm a, I was an hour early actually. Listen, for the first uh 42 <laughs> clips, for the first 42 uh, episodes, I was in a different time zone too. So he said he's hey, early. Listen, hey, I got something for Diallo whenever he says some food stuff. I'll do this. <laughs> yeah. And just keep moving. <laughs> Hey, oh boy. So what's up, man? I, I've been seeing I, I've been seeing a whole bunch of like conversations and arguments around this um soldier who took his life, the protest, the ultimate sacrifice. I haven't heard much from y'all too, but what 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 what's y'all take on the, the whole little situation? Well, you know, I've always said ever since a uh a professor accused me of uh mm -hmm hating white people and thinking that white people uh, are all bad and do all the evil in the world. And we had a discussion after class about that, after she accused me of that in class. And I said, the easiest way to get yourself deleted from white history is to do something just or do something truly heroic, you know? So I, so I think- to never hear from him much. again, huh? Yeah, I mean, that's, I said, you know, that all their tyrants and villains end up with monuments, holidays, and on currency. You know, the worse the white man does, the more venerated he is in, in uh, their society and their history. So I think that's pretty much, you know, he's going to join the ranks of all the other white people that did something uh, that could be defined as, as just. 
He's going to be villainized and then forgotten. I'm not mad at that take at all. I, I'll, I'll also be perfectly honest. What, like with many things, this is a good example of 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 my most honest response. I wouldn't share publicly. Uh, but I, as I said the other day, I I do think that. I would have, I respect where he he concluded in terms of his analysis of the problem. It seemed like he reached the right conclusion. I also got word, by the way, that apparently on Reddit, which I do not have or pay any attention to, I've heard indirectly that he was a, a routine consumer of some black left YouTube including F to signifier, Andrewism, uh, and a couple others that folks around here might be familiar with. Uh, so I, I, I thought that was interesting to, 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 to learn to the extent that that's correct. I do wish, as I said the other day though, I do, I, I mean, if I, if, if I don't mean to disrespect him, I, but I do wish he would have found an outlet for his res resistance or his desire for response in some sort of political organized activity. Uh, I don't because I, in part because of what Diallo said, the 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 act itself is I've already seen it already easily misinterpreted mis and misrepresented on his way to being consigned as as Dr. Clark used to say the dustbin of history and uh what he might have hoped for I think is I don't know obviously I don't know what his ultimate hopes were for that act but I don't know that they will will be realized uh in any more than they would have been had he found another outlet uh but yeah I don't I mean, know what did you think yeah, I mean, I think I think the uh, the act and how it makes people grapple with with reality. So I, I remember having this little back and forth with uh, I think it's an older woman from from my hometown. And she was saying, like, condolences to his family. And so I kept pushing back, like, well, what about the families that that lost loved ones fighting for just causes um, that the military and himself included, which he said being complicit in genocide. What about those families? And then, um, so I think, I guess the conversation around it and then the idea of like a better way, like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure for him in particular, there's a better way to make a message and make a print. And I'm always curious how he would be received as a white military person, even if, even if he you know, speaks radically, how he will be received in certain organizations. Cause he, even with that, um, What's that Chicago thing where that man who's driving around in a hearse and he kept talking about how he was left and he was radical and everybody believed him and then you know and he was an alphabet boy. Yeah, so like I, you know, no, I, yeah, I, but I mean at the same time you have, honestly, I don't know too many of the white ones, but you have a whole list of former black veterans who did positive things in the struggle. Uh, my point would also have been while wow, active duty though. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I, let me, like I said, but, 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 well. Chelsea Manning, that's all. That's what would happen. That's, that would, that, that's probably right. They but, treat but them like they treated her. That's what would happen. Or they would pat Tillman in his ass. Apparently, yeah. And that's what, I think that's another point. Like, like this person is in fully control uh, of, himself in terms of like they couldn't kill him but he could in that manner as opposed to again like the the tillman joint friendly fire or whatever else that might be and then and then also like i think one of the other contradictions obviously everybody saw where the guy who said can i help you was trying to help him and then you know the cop having a gun holding a gun on him at, at all the whole time as if he was gonna you know throw fire fireballs at him or you know, he was doing the trick or magic trick or something. So I, mean, I, I think, think they just panic. They don't know what to do other than to pull their gun, 
whenever I mean, they're he, stressed. You could they could be yeah. thinking in their mind, I'm actually performing CPR. <laughs> but they're holding a gun on it. I think, but you're right. Yeah. Sorry. That's your rough. That's your rough, man. But yeah. I I guess again for public consumption, I I I, I, I was, I'm stuck at and it's just a personal thing. Mm-hmm when I can't help but do, you know, run through the, how would I react or what would I, but my, my, so what I keep thinking is if, if I've reached the point where I am willing to do that, I just feel like there's so many other things that, that would also be available on, on the, 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 the buffet table of options. Uh, That's all. But I, on some level, I respect almost all reactions to the insanity of this world. I'm not saying I just the justified or I agree or or would support all, but I, in some way, understand where where they're all coming. I mean, because it's it's madness out here. You, you know, uh, so thanks. Why is the dome peace? Welcome, welcome. I know you uh supposed to uh, get into some Joy Joy James uh, later on, and she sent me uh the new bones one, and oh, I think I'm I'm starting yeah. to I'm starting mm-hmm. to grapple more with what she says in terms about the captive maternal and like, mm-hmm. um, and I th- I think the way in which it expresses itself, given the circumstances of even as I think about like George Jackson and feeling like maybe you're not in an environment where you can depend on other people to be in solidarity with your level of activism. And so again, I, I I mean, I think this is another conversation that, that I think I told both of y'all I would want to have in confident, but I don't know when you make choices and there's certain things around you that doesn't make sense. You, you kind of like make a choice to do something and you already fully thought about the consequences. And so I mean yeah. my thing is if you if you think if 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 one has reached the point he had reached and one has is to your point active duty and has let me just let me let me just stop. Let me I, let me stop. I don't I don't I don't think I, yeah. Let me let me stop. I it's cool. We, I mean, we weren't on a run sheet, but I, yeah, I, I think there's some nuance to differences of making conclusions and adding some other people. But uh, anything else we want to get into before we get into I will into say, that? I just will say that in respect to, in, to him, that, that uh, the, and this is sort of always part of my concern, the abuse of his intent and message by others in media spaces uh including you know i do subscribe to to military.com and one of the stories just to see how they they cover things and what they cover the and and one of the things that that one of the stories i I saw just quickly was just it it, it was already framing him in a way to disassociate him from anything obviously the military's mission would be or from Mm -hmm. the military's impact on creating that conclusion for him uh, in other words, what was he seeing and experiencing within that military environment? Never mind the information or the analysis that was was adding to the information and analysis that led him to that conclusion. So I, but yeah, yeah. Uh, anything else y'all want to kind of like uh, was going on with y'all before we get into some of these topics? Diallo, how you, how you uh, did you make it to the uh, the Umar rally? Uh no, mm. no, and and I I, th- I think it's uh I think the the black community here in the Chicago as much as they uh bring Umar out and the crowds he attracts when he comes here to Chicago or even like the black community allowing uh 19 keys to sell out the Apollo, I think that's that's evidence of menticide. You know, mm. I think it's more the real tragedy there is not about those characters and those demagogues and more about, you know, the state of, of, of our collective consciousness. Right. You know, I, I, I ain't going to I, that bullshit. 
Hey, real quick though, shout out to Marcel P. Black and his February <laughs> month long tribute to Umar. It, it it was it was my favorite part of Black History Month. And and Umar and even respect to Umar. The 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 the, the, the charisma, the performance, it was thoroughly entertaining. <laughs> it was I'm- I, I'm not gonna lie. I had to put Marcel on mute a couple of times because I sometimes Umar is like too much for me. But but those maybe clips should... though, the, the, in the, that curated those curated clips though for me were perfect. Yeah, because yeah. it, it it just enough. But it is it is also a reminder of 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 I think also to your point, Diallo, of, of why they're successful and of course why they're platformed and given all this access. Uh, well, but according yeah. to Umar, I, I think, I according think to Umar, you got to blame Chicago, though. According to Umar, because he said, "So this clip, I, I show a small clip of something that he said, but he talked about his his uh, UNIA story, how he became, how he became the Prince of Pan Africanism, and it ends with he got his first start in Chicago, and then he blew up overnight." But the fifth, this where Darby, this where Malcolm, this where most of the Pan Africanists had their start. So I have copies of the Chicago interview, September 18th, in my hand, October 30th, the night before Halloween in Harlem. And I disseminated that DVD there. And overnight, I became the biggest name in black consciousness. 13 years later, I'm still the biggest name in black consciousness. Was that, so, that that's... Yeah, yeah, so he, so he, he talked about how he grew up um, right next to uh, UNIA Center um, going through school, matriculating through school, and then he he talked one time in Chicago because you know they heard him talking, and Chicago kind of filmed the filmed him. He got it the film. Like the he, Diallo origin story. <laughs> he used that film to to propel his his career, and he has been the hottest thing ever since. But well, Diallo I got think... that one radio hit and turned into the biggest sensation on BPM at least. <laughs> I, I listen, you know, we hear a lot about Stockholm syndrome and, and the black community and our relationship to this overall system of oppression. But, you know, as I went to look and specifically look at the 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 Stockholm situation and the the analysis and the psychology, I, I think black people are not under Stockholm syndrome, because if you go and read the story, the um, the robbers in Stockholm actually treated the their victims with care. They were manipulated and seduced because the and 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 in the interviews that um, of the of the victims or the hostages, they stated that they felt safer with the abuse with the robbers than they felt with the police, and they felt that the police. Were, were more interested in just executing their jobs and asserting their authority than their safety. We've never been treated well. We've never been treated well. So we don't, there, there's, we, our, our situation is not Stockholm. Our situation is more akin to the bad, it used to be called back in the 80s and 90s, battered wife syndrome. But then they changed it because, you know, it was, Acknowledge that men could also uh, endure and come up with this condition, the battered spouse syndrome, where you have these these um, these peaks and valleys of abuse and affection uh, uh, being treated tenderly and then being treated harshly. And so I think these leaders and these individuals, it's, it's like a you have low self-esteem or low racial esteem. So you don't really think you're worthy of better leadership, of qu- more quality leadership. And anyone that's willing to get up and speak on your behalf should be honored and venerated and even worshipped because, you know, we don't deserve better. And I right. think that's more of a, of, of a battered race syndrome when you take these things that can happen to an individual like battered spouse mm-hmm. or, or low self-esteem. And you look at a battered race syndrome or a low racial esteem. And, and that behavior is almost identical to someone in a toxic relationship with an individual, how we are as a people in these dysfunctional, predatory and exploitative relationship with these so-called leaders or these leading blacks. You know, right. so it, it, it's funny that someone could be such a, a character and so engage in what I call self-exposure or new Negro self-exposure of just how insincere 
and dysfunctional they are and how unworthy they are, but we don't really conduct ourselves. And I really don't think consciously or subconsciously that we think we're, we're worthy of better treatment or better leadership. You know, and we say, oh, girlfriend, you could do better. I want to say to the African race, oh, you know, race friend, you could do better than having somebody that gets up there and he ain't lying when he says, I'm the top, I'm the number one. We right. know we got, we know all our critiques of him, but what does that say about our communities? Like right. we said, we got these, these sh obvious naked charlatans. And we, we, it's so clear when we look at Trump and how he's pimping and playing the whole white race. But when when we when it's time to look in the mirror, I wish we had were just as acute and critical about so our so-called leaders. So, Dial, do you you have that video you sent in the link, or uh, I mean, in the chat, or can you tell us what Umar's new uh, theory? I sent it to you. Well, you sent it to everybody. When I sent so. you stuff, I wash my hands of it, Geechee. When, well, right, well, well, is you this the well, one about the? Is this the 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 migrant crisis in Chicago? Yeah. I was, either, that video? I, I was either gonna let Umar explain it or our Umar explain it. So which one? Oh damn! Hold on, <laughs> I got the video here. Hold on. Uh, why sell it for not one? our Umar? No, we talking about you. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, no, nice he ain't talking at all. You're the only one talking. <laughs> all right, here we go. Here we go. I'm well. I'm well. Glad to be back in Chicago. Uh, there's a migrant crisis town hall meeting tonight. So I'm gonna go there and speak a little bit, you know, hear from the people what's really going on because the country wanna know. Uh, me personally, I believe the migrant situation in Chicago and New York is being led by the federal government. They're spearheading this to basically erase black people politically. Chicago has the only predominantly black US congressional uh, district in the entire country. That's why Obama had a lane, Carol Mosley Braun had a lane. Most of your modern black senators we've only had a handful they came from Chicago because y'all have the only predominantly black U.S. congressional district. So they want to switch that out for Latinos. That's why they're here to replace us politically. I suspect that at some future point in time, if they're not already doing it, they're going to fast track the migrants in Chicago and New York to full citizenship so they can vote. And I wouldn't be surprised if they'll. Be so, Dale, I know you said you wasn't there, but how big is that send them back movement for black people. Um, I, I know they talked about the, the city proposing migrant housings in a school in Woodlawn or a hotel in Kenwood. And they talked about, you know, 150 million is already going towards or set aside for Chicago's uh, 2024 budget. But what, what, well, obviously they, it's-, it's first, of, first of all, I have to talk about the stupidity of this, of, of Dr. Fubar. Mm -hmm. First of all, as he did correctly stated about the Democrat, the, the voting block here. Why would because when he says the federal government, the federal government is generally right now. Uh, you have a what branch of the fucking federal government, the executive branch. Because. Biden wouldn't fucking be president if not for black of these black voting blocks. So what, how would it serve him to replace the black voting block, which is solidly democratic? I live in a one, I mean, which is solid. So you got a group of minorities that give you a loyal voter base every election. They put you over every election and you're just going to randomly replace it with another voter base that historically does tend to start off democratic but it has a much stronger trend as they become educated, more affluent in generations to move Republican. Why the fuck with the federal government? What part of the fucking federal government is he even talking about? And this man, Dr. Umar, who claims he's a scholar and a Pan-Africanist, what fucking sense would that even make for them to do it? Now, I understand why the oppressors are evil. They're insidious. But when I look at their evil agendas, it tends to lead somewhere for some particular outcome. But he could just say the federal government, because black people with any kind of sense are generally have a hostile view of the federal government, which is a fucking monstrous entity. It's huge everywhere. Tentacles all over the place. So when you talk about a specific agenda from the federal government, where is it coming from? So that makes no fucking sense because at the same time he 
accurately say you have these black voting blocks. They're all fucking solidly, loyally, and consistently democratic for over half a century. So why would the Republican or why would the federal government seek to upend that or replace that, especially the current federal government? It would might even, you could even, if stupid either worry, but even if the Republicans ran the federal government, the Republicans have the Supreme Court. What what is it? They're appointed. They're not voted. So they can't. So let's look at the Congress. The, 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 the House of Representatives, the Senate. And look at who, who, who the black folks in there. Like, why the fuck would the federal government want to blow up these black voting blocks? And then he never speaks to real shit. He never speaks to our real issues. He goes from, oh, they're, 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 uh, they're, they're dresses and gays oh, oh, and snow bunnies. He never fucking, how can you be a member of a race, a scholar and a freedom fighter for a race that's under genocidal oppression? But every time you talk on an issue, it's something you literally pulled out of the ass of the right wing, out of the conservatives. So before we even talk about what's really going on with the migrant issue in Chicago, motherfuckers like him. That people who are concerned about African people, if they start to listen to and follow somebody like Dr. Fubar, they end up not understanding what is in the interest of African people. They're not understanding the ideology and agenda of pan-Africanism and not even understanding what the fuck our solutions or problems are. You're dumber for having engaged with this man and his assertions and his ideology which is not pan-Africanism, but it's black Puritan, reactionary Puritanism. And, and I think for if someone can go be as number one and, and everything you say goes viral damn near, and for somebody to be able to be on top and all these things he brags about, like I said, again, the, we, we're, we're, we are under the battered race syndrome, especially in relationship to our most prominent leaders. But I'm sorry, but I, I think no. that needs to be said. I I just quickly I, I I don't think I don't think I disagree with any of that. I think in that I agree that those points need to be made. I mean, this is ultimately my biggest concern as well, or at least similarly, it's it's it, it must is a similar concern that my first thought was was also first of all, what is he talking about in terms of of uh, the Chicago Democratic machine? would want to replace i mean that part uh, again with diallo's point is immediately nonsensical mm -hmm. then uh uh i mean biden is an offshoot of obama who is an offshoot of the 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 clinton machinery all of which has all kinds of support from that whole i mean so i, I just don't understand why so 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 instead of a critique of maybe the Democratic Party and its policies and its what, what it doesn't do for the black community to then, as Diallo correctly notes, to take the very right wing talking point, starting with a thread, uh, like a like like an allusion to something correct, that, that that this is born out of federal policy, but then to give no detail, to give no explanation, at least in what we're seeing there. So I'm hoping later on, maybe it, during the, the great build, there was some clarification. I don't know. But in terms of what we're seeing here and the frame being used to start his, his, his analysis, it, it seems all wrong uh, to, 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 uh, yeah. All right. So. Just, just real quick, one other thing. I just want to highlight this other point, though. It's a disservice to call yourself the King Kong of consciousness, number one, all of these things. And then, again, to Diallo's point, there's, there's nothing in there that unpacks what Pan-Africanism is. To talk about Garvey in one sense and then to demean or to pit yourself or to allow yourself to be pitted against the immigrant communities when Garvey himself started his career in those communities, working his way up through South and Central America, building with Afro-Latinos and, and, and learning what was happening in those communities 
as he made his way up here to to expand his work and to construct whatever. And he whatever got deported. He, and then, of course, he got deported ultimately because, well, for a, a variety of reasons, none of which was leading his people to a, a complete and total misunderstanding of, in this case, electoral politics in Chicago. But that's sort of my point. Anyway, the, the, the short of it, the, the long now that I've made it long, the short, the, it really what I'm just trying to say is that that there, there is this in this disservice being uh, imposed on his audiences that is frustrating and it's couched in a black radical frame and symbol, but it's very white supremacist and conservative in its core. I, I mean, so back to like a couple uh, and episodes yeah. in when we, when Sorry. we talked about like how the breakfast club and stuff like that and, you got to remember the the reason why Umar would get on a Breakfast Club is so that he could paint the picture of that mass audience what Pan Africanism is and how it's illogical, and then how Charlemagne is more of a logical political thinker, right? And so, I mean that that's and just, now that we it, saw, I don't, I'm sorry to cut you off, but you just reminded me. But now that we saw that great film, The Forgotten Occupation about Haiti, and Charlemagne Perrault formerly Peralta, I believe, or Peralto from the Dominican origin and his revolutionary uh, uh, his revolutionary pan-African contribution to struggle not only being suppressed but but used initially as a symbol to suppress further revolution and now clearly the people have 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 rehabilitated and returned the the that Charlemagne to his rightful status and we should I need to learn more about the about the brother but it's even more irritating now to see that that name Charlemagne being further reduced and attacked <laughs> by someone self referring as the god when yeah. when people doing what what others might call God's work are not only brutally dealt with in 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 real life and lived experience but then in image. Uh, so yeah, so shout out to 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 that to to Alan Martin and the Forgotten Occupation and to to all the uh, cacos I believe they're called uh, right. that Charlemagne Perrault was. You know, shout out to them. You know, so, so. but Diallo. So what in terms of oh, again, and I then, my bad. One more thing. One more thing. Because Two Black is right in the chat too. By the way. That, that what, it's it's what, odd how Garvey's Pan Africanism is being reduced to uh, uh, a reverse hashtag uh, conclusion. Entrepreneurship. Well, uh, not on, not just entrepreneurship, but just yeah. Black American only. Like it's, uh, it's 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 taking on this decidedly Black America only focus, and the immigrants are the em enemy, and it's like this. It's a very odd approach to Pan Africanism. All right, my bad. I but yeah, so Dial, in terms of. We know that people obviously brought him to Chicago, so there had to be some type of segment. But in terms of like maybe the movements or the leaders, like how have you been seeing this otherize, um, otherizing of immigrants and saying that these people are going to take our jobs? Again, I saw numbers about a hundred million embark in Cook County's budget to care for migrants, um, and then so there's a there's a, a load of money that's going First toward all, these things to be. We use this propaganda, whatever. Go ahead. The terminology is off. They're not migrants. They're refugees. Mm -hmm. They come from a place, a country that's under siege by the United States. For 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 since before the Obama administration, the United States has conducted coup d'etats. They have engaged in illegal economic blockades. They have ran the full playbook of the economic hitmen against Venezuela, against Haiti against Honduras. These people are economic, military, uh, intelligence apparatus, and ecological refugees that are victims of U.S. imperialism. So as African people who are also plagued by U.S. imperialism, racism, white hegemony, and capitalism, when we see other people engage uh, or, or respond or try to navigate or endure the ravages of capitalism and white hegemony, we have to come at it from that perspective. 
If we find ourselves on the side of the xenophobes, the anti-immigrants, the bottom line is you don't respect the borders of an empire. You don't stand with the territorial integrity of an empire. The moment your territory engage in imperialist, colonial uh, uh, aggression, you're, you no longer can justly talk about your border integrity or even your own national sovereignty. I don't think that our community is educated enough about the, uh, uh, the Bolivarian Revolution and the U.S. machinations in Central South America and the Caribbean. People don't come here because this is a That's great country. Theology so, is and for whatever problem you as a black individual or, or uh, black communities that are ravaged by the manipulations and machinations of capitalism and white xenophobia, you will never be able to find solutions to any of the issues in your problem within the right wing, reactionary, xenophobic, racist uh, uh, cadres. So even if you think migration is a problem, but it's not migration. When black people left the South in droves, Northern Negroes were saying the same thing. There were whole articles in the affluent and amongst the, you know, I was just reading about, you know, the warmth of other suns and, and other books that talk about the great migration. It wasn't great and it wasn't a migration. It was an expulsion. It was a trillion dollar land grab. So as we define things, we have to use the more accurate terms. Calling these people, well, the right wing calls them invaders. The liberals call them migrants. But we who are conscious have to say, these are refugees who are engaged in a justified or justifiable act of fleeing war zones, freeing targeted areas, freeing climate change. And the U.S. is the number one driver of climate change and climate disruption, fleeing economic assassination. Or as what did, what did the motherfucker say? We're going to make their economy scream. You know. So no, it's it's it, oh my bad. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go on. I mean, no, I was just gonna. I mean, I'm just saying that in agreement that that when I hear those those perspectives, it's it it's, it's giving uh, that uh, someone who has never had a conversation with an actual so called migrant. Uh, but I think Diallo's perspective is better uh, in terms of refugee. They don't, and they and they don't have any understanding of the policies and the histories that led to these people making that horrific trek like these, these the, the things people do to, to get here to do the jobs that nobody wants to do at weight wages nobody wants to work for uh for, while paying taxes and being little rewarded for that as well and then being used to be pitted against other colonized communities i mean it's 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 crazy to so it's just not it's just a, it's just a bad analysis and again i just want to emphasize one more time that he's doing a disservice to his audience never mind how other communities or other whoever might feel about what he's saying it's the, it's his target audience that he's um again doing a disservice to in terms of um, limiting the their conclusions and their own analyses. He's if not you want to learn right. about and, 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 don't don't go to don't go to Umar. Go to Dr. Layla Brown. She'll she'll teach you more. And, and I'm Umar. sorry, I do have to because every time you ask me a question, I go on another. In terms of black community and our responses, I have to say, in Chicago, as a person who's been black all my life, none of African people's problems. The only migrants that are at the core of black people's issues are the ones that came over on the Mayflower or the Nina, the Pinta and the Santeria. Our, our, and so, but anyway, I'm saying that to say our problems do not originate with the so-called migrant crisis. It's not a migrant crisis. It's not a refugee. It's an, it's a capitalist crisis. It's a racism crisis. It's an ecological crisis. And, and for us to be calling it migrants, and I'm telling you, and I pr promise you, they could gather up every so-called illegal and ship them south of the border, and there would be no appreciable transformation of African people's conditions because that is 
not the source of our issues. It is a symptom of the, our the same thing that caused these problems are the things that cause our problems. And so we're at each other and we, we, we're attacking these pop other vulnerable populations and other victimized and, and preyed upon populations. But it, that is not the source of our problems. It, they, they deflect. And it's this shit. Everybody walks around talking about divide and conquer and all this shit. And as if they're so well aware of it while being divided and conquered. So it's, in terms of these groups, in terms of whatever migrant wave comes for as a result, you know, every time when you want to look at uh, um, the migrant population, you're all you're looking at is a part of is, is a person from a place in the world that's being targeted by the U.S. government. And I say to every, I'd like to gather up every racist and every reactionary from Dr. Fubar to the MAGA heads and let them know, if you hate immigrants and you hate immigration, you should be anti-imperialist. You should be on the front line of the anti-imperialist struggle. Because that is the what causes and provokes mass migrations. If you did away with imperialism, and this number two, uh, global capitalism going over and forcing people to orient their economies towards exports and, and profits as opposed to orienting their economy around meeting the needs of their their citizenship that's the number two driver that's right. the number two driver militarism imperialism capitalism and we've seen like i said you name the country when honduras when Venezuela, when Haiti, when the Lava Lost movement was gaining ground for the first time in decades, there was a reverse flow of immigrants where we had more Haitians exiting the United States to return under the Eric Steed government. Because in the early 90s, remember the whole Haitian AIDS, they're bringing AIDS here, the kind of shit they would say. And they, they were Haitians on inner tubes full of AIDS coming to America and even movies like uh, Waiting to Exhale or some of them other black movies, this whole Haitian AIDS. But Diallo, what this got to do with Pan-Africanism? Pan-Africanists don't have no time to talk about Haiti. Right. But well, uh, exactly. Man, man. That's, that's what you, <laughs> and you got a so-called prince, our, our, our prince. We need to go ahead. Over here, talk about Haiti like you a real pan African. But, uh, What's wrong but with remember, you? there was a reverse wrong with you? flow. For the first time in modern history, there were more Haitians leaving the U.S. and returning to Haiti. And then Bill Clinton, with his coup d'etat, a, 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 a CIA-supported, coup d'etat and exile of the president and the Fair upending Steve. of the Lava Loss movement. The same thing was happening in Venezuela. Venezuela was lending billions of dollars, sending resources to, 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 to Hurricane Katrina victims, gave Haiti $3 billion under the Bolivarian literacy. They were moving in the same way Cuba was moving, not exporting mm -hmm. weapons, but exporting physicians giving out uh, humanitarian funds. And the U.S. upended their economy, coup d'etat. And, and, and so, again, you didn't see Venezuelans leaving the country. Venezuelans from the diaspora were returning to their country to be a part of that movement. So in all these things, whenever Black folks sit here and, and complain about refugees, especially refugees, that are a byproduct of the very same ideology, the very same institutions, and the very same agendas that have us under a genocidal stranglehold. And we think we can join with the reactionary whites to protect our country because they're using our they're they're using our resources. They were gonna put up uh uh they they been ballooning the police budget, and I don't hear shit about it, but they spend a, a bent nickel on the on the migrants. And, they, and they're counting and watching every penny while this country, while this city is hemorrhaging money, all these no bid contracts, people feeding all these parasites, feeding off the Chicago economy. And, and every time they like I said, they spend a bit nickel. And even though they act like there's really literally people out here talking about them walking around, just giving 
uh, refugees stacks on stacks on stacks. And I know black folks been struggling in this city since before I got here. And you swear their problems, they were living in a utopia before the Venezuelans started begging on our street corners. So let, let me ask y'all this before we go to the next topic. I, I, no, I got, so, I got, I don't, we can't but, go. I got, I got something I want to throw in here too. The, all right. The, well, the, I still can ask. So, so the, Trump is um being positioned as like pro immigration. And he talks about like taxing the countries when their people come over. And it sounds similar to Reagan's position. And so it could be positioned that Umar is on the radical side and y'all might be supporting Trump and, and, um and, even both both of the uh, the pig parties, right? So Wait, what, what? what you said Trump is pro immigration? Well, I'm not saying he's pro immigration. I'm saying he's using language to where he's he's supposedly wel welcoming them over, but charging the uh, other um charging the countries that they came from, or, or not sending funding from the countries that they came from. Well, that so, would be, that's that's as ridiculous not as his that. claim that he's going to have Mexico build his wall. I mean. Trump, uh, Trump did, uh, Arizona Trump did, is Trump passing make legislation to allow citizens to shoot migrants. What? Well, well, one of Trump's quotes says he, he says, "So we're going to work out something where every time somebody comes in from a certain country, we're going to deduct a rather large amount of money from that we give them in aid." So again, he's he's saying not to send them back, but he's. But that's not a pro-immigration policy. I, I'm not saying it is. What I'm saying is. If it's positioned to where you sound like, because we're on the internet, right? We're not we're not in logical spaces. You sound like you're supporting immigration with Trump, and Umar is against it. He for the people. There's I'm saying no position of of Trump that that favors immigration. That that it's just that's just not the even case. that claim isn't in favor of immigration. It's a it's it's it sounds more like a, a, a right wing claim that. Uh, uh, we will make them stop sending us their their citizens by taxing them, by punishing them economically, and we'll make them step up and do more to stop their people from coming up here. One, all well, just one. It it it. First of all, I I I would he probably needs to revisit all of those CAFTA and NAFTA agreements, which mandate by law that you can't do anything that upsets the corporate outflow and extraction of money from these people's countries so he can't do that he would he would be taken to that that private court of judges and charged with 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 uh you know and and put in some penalty for breaking that contract he can't upset the 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 but the real thing is of course that it's not meant to support immigration it's meant as a as a new a way to give himself a new talking point for the election to 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 stop what he's what he's you know his what he's blaming on the the other part of it is if umar and others would do their their audiences a better service they would remind people of the history of bracero programs etc and the 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 federal government's abuse of labor by inviting immigrants in when they want to undercut labor here and then forcing them out when they need a talking point to get themselves elected on a conservative ticket. So this is all a big hustle meant again to, 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 to further all this uh, confusion and, and divide and conquer while ultimately wedding black liberation almost exclusively to the whims of the United States and its leadership, which is just antithetical to everything both Pan-African and revolutionary in, in thought. My last point that I just wanted to, 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 to make on this, to add to the levels of contradictions that Umar represents here, by calling yourself the number one on Breakfast Club and the number one on YouTube or the number one on the internet for consciousness is an enormous contradiction because all that is is a marker of, of how well you serve the algorithm and it's largely white supremacist embedded ideology and it's advertising uh, requirements and demands. So it's, a, it's almost a confession of sorts to say that my analysis is best suited to the most elite and prevalent white advertisers uh, and ideologues in 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 the country and on the internet 
And that I think should make, should cause everyone to take a moment and rethink what it is that he's advocating and uh, uh, and what approaches might be better uh, addressed. So also, I mean, I think in the in the quote is is what I I guess what I was trying to set up the suggestion that he is helping or the U.S. is helping these countries that aiding them. And since we're aiding y'all, y'all should be able to take care of your people, not send them here. But since you send them here, we're going to stop the aid. So I, I was more so of trying to explain uh, or trying to push into highlighting the contradiction of what this aid looks like when why are you giving and who's who's these countries? Um, but go ahead, Diallo. I you can respond. Oh, well, yeah. And, 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 and U.S. foreign aid is 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 corporate welfare. I, I think some people really envision when they make these announcements about 200 million going here or or, or a billion dollars going to Ukraine. I think people really imagine crates full of U.S. dollars being shipped over and and especially these ADOS and these reactionary uh, uh, payouts, you know, uh, who, who see reparations as nothing more than a, 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 a cash fall. Um, they're not sending money. They're paying U.S. manufacturers, U.S. contractors, U.S. organizations and institutions to provide products and services. So the money doesn't go overseas. And that's the thing when uh, it was a big thing. Oh, they're sending all that money to Ukraine. I'm like, they're not sending money to Ukraine. They're giving money to U.S institutional investors to send surplus ammunition and shit that's already existing. So if you want to say, hey, give us our cut, they can send you some some um, grenades. They can send you some missile guidance systems that they make even in peacetime. They spend the money on this shit regardless. And they put they stockpile these weapons and these munitions and these vehicles of war and mass murder they stockpile them. So I think the average American is really confused about U.S. aid, even though um, NGOs and, and, and other international actors are even trying to school Americans that the United States is not this ATM for the world that's giving all this money to other people. And another thing, even if they were sending the money here, if you obstruct that money, doesn't mean the money's coming back. I mean, I engage with black people here in Chicago that you would think before the current crisis, which that you Chicago was a utopia, that all our problems start and end with these migrants sleeping outside of police stations. It, it's incredible to me that they just pivot on a dime. That that so, that they can def redefine the issues and just have black people what I call atrocity hopping instead of getting to the core. That's why radicalism is so essential. Radicalism isn't just about being militant or radicalism is about understanding issues at their core and proposing and engaging in remedies also that deal with the core. Instead of just looking at this surface, because the surface people are like, oh, shit is crazy. Shit is chaotic. No, shit is consistent and shit is deliberate. It may be crazy and chaotic for us, but the, the, the power relationships, the hierarchies and the flow of resources and the accumulation of capital with all this madness never accidentally reverses flow. It all flows and sustained in the same way. So this is not madness. This is deliberate, conscious, criminal activity, conspiracy. So that we just say, oh, this looks crazy because it because we get the fallout on the messy end. So to my point, shout out uh to Double O African, uh, the erstwhile producer of the program who sent me this as a reminder of where all of this first of all, is a reminder of where all this brilliant pan-African analysis is actually coming from. And it's perfect that it was a discussion centered around Chicago, given that Chicago has provided some of the best economic analysis going back decades, particularly from the University of Chicago, uh, that are now being represented brilliantly by our Pan-African King of Consciousness, uh, King Kong of Consciousness. So let's check this out. For example, at the obvious, immediate, practical case of illegal Mexican immigration. Now that Mexican immigration over the border 
is a good thing. It's a good thing for the illegal immigrants. It's a good thing for the United States. It's a good thing for the citizens of the country. But it's only good so long as it's illegal. That's an interesting paradox to think about. Make it legal, and it's no good. Why? Because as long as it's illegal, the people who come in do not qualify for welfare. They don't qualify for Social Security. They don't qualify for all the other myriads of benefits that we pour out from, what, from our left pocket into our right pocket. And so as long as they don't qualify, they migrate to jobs. They take jobs that uh, uh, most residents of this country are unwilling to take. They provide employers with workers of a kind they cannot get. They're hard workers. They're good workers. And they are clearly better off. Look, for example, at the... So if you, if you just dress that analysis up, in some beautiful melanin and clothing uh, and then add that they not only come over here and those jobs that they take are being taken from the black community and you actually end up, you actually end up getting something worse than the Milton Friedman analysis of the problem. Uh, Cause right. at least Friedman was being more honest and accurate about why the <laughs> ruling political and economic elite of this country have always managed the in and outflow of this so-called legal or illegal migration. They love this. And I just heard last night again in a presentation out here in these tree-lined streets uh, from Diedrich Muhammad, some more discussion, briefly at least, of the of this very fact that most of the, the so-called... Uh, uh, the, most of the this, the immigrants who, who are over here so-called doing well have already come from that position. They're the handful who get the elite visas and welcome packages and are coming from already established family or economic backgrounds. And they're used to to describe, you know, create a false reality around what is going on with immigration. And then the 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 underclass of that, the under current of that is just described there by Milton Freeman. And then if and we and and Umar and, and the like are giving a completely upside down and backwards uh, understanding of all of that. So anyway, thanks to the double O African community and uh uh and I appreciate that clip being sent right on time. Yeah. So let's Can get we, into it, go, oh, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Just, just, it just it just burns my ear when I hear someone say take a job. Like, have you ever had a friend or a homie that say, Hey man, I got some good news. I just took a job. How come immigrants are the only people in the world that can take a job? You're given the job. And that we put the focus on the job receiver instead of the job giver. It it's just such a my just the language we have around this. Again, the white the, folks are just standing there with their good jobs, and they're like, "Whoever right. wants, like, can well, have it." Oh, I was we, we I was holding this job with two fists for a colored man, and then here comes this Mexican and snatched it. And then we say, "Which way did he go, boss?" I'm gonna <laughs> chase him down and get that job back. Like the fuck, what? You know, I had which a way did, which college way did he educated, go? very skilled, and he got arrested on a felony, and he went to to, to prison. And got out of prison and couldn't work in his field anymore and in, 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 in uh, economics and finance where his degree was. And he got to the point where he was doing day labor. Right. And he'd stand out there and he said every day the people would pass him up, pass him up, pass him up. And they said, we don't want U.S. workers because you get hurt on the job and you as a U.S. citizen, even as a felon. We got a lot of paperwork to fill out and all this shit to go through. So we get the people off the books. They get hurt. We can dump them in a field. We can dump them outside an emergency room. We can dump them just across the border. And nobody asks questions. This is not about uh, do, do these white racist folks really got more love for the Arawaks, <laughs> the Tainos, than they for black people. They just got a soft heart or this rhetoric about their heart. They work harder. That's what they sell us. And we really start to buy into and regurgitate. Oh, see, they'll work. They'll, they'll, they'll work hard. Well, we don't want to work. 
if black I mean, people would only be willing to work hard. One of their, they, they, they little fucking harebrain, uh, uh, small time hustles. At least stop falling for the small time cons. Make the fucking propagandists and the oppressors work harder to trick you. Go ahead, Geechee. What, what, what do we got in the, in the, in the Q and A? I'm just saying when, the, when the oppressors trick you, you just. You... <laughs> And then move the fuck on. <laughs> but all right. So let's go to the uh the Q and A uh segment real quick. Uh who we got? So I, I uh I saw this one, Ultimate Insanity, right? And so I, I wonder w- one what y'all think, but one of the crescent questions I was raising is like he's and they talk about the uh the guy who who burned himself. But he's insane for doing that. But he's not insane for going to fight for the U.S. to, to, to murder people. Um, oh, I thought Lead was self-describing their contribution to the chat yesterday. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah, I didn't. Maybe know. I don't know. But so again, like I, you hear things about this soldiers or this ex-soldier or whatever it is, his insanity, his mental health, made the wrong decision or whatever. Whatever else, I just thought it's interesting how. People reduce. Well, listen, I've seen, you know, again, I from time to time review what military press and and PR distribute. And I I remember uh, a clip that resonated very well with me was a presentation by one leading U.S. Navy admiral. And he said he was asked about PTSD and he said in in the prevalence of PTSD and he said there he basically he said something to the effect that there there are 0% of service personnel who escape le- any level of PTSD he said everybody has it every deployment creates it every experience generates it it's it's only a matter of degree levels and what levels of support that individual is able to get and the success of that support so I, 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 so I'm sure that whatever this person was experiencing prior to their military experience, it wasn't helped uh, other than what seems to be a clarity in analysis. Because again, what I know of this person was what we saw in that 60 seconds or so video up until the, to the point that you had on your Instagram. Mm-hmm. And he seemed rational he mentioned the colonial relationship and status, which suggests to me an elevated consciousness and clarity. Sound like uh, it. So I, I wouldn't dismiss it as insanity other than other than a sa- insanity to the, you know, uh, to, I don't know how the clinical term is meant to be used, but other than insanity that has been encouraged and inspired by and, and added to uh, by active duty. Diallo, you had anything? Yeah, um, I don't think so. I think, uh, as uh, Professor Mackey used to say, he didn't go crazy. He went sane. All right, shout out to Wise, the Dome TV, four ninety nine. Got five on it. Peace to the good brothers. Thank very much. Thank you. Good morning. Thanks again. Ricky says the highest level of class suicide. Mm-hmm. Uh, DC is a joke. It's, it's DC better. Joe Black. Good morning. Thank you three for the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Passionate rebellion, revolutionary greetings. Everybody's morning, dropping man. them dollars on us, man. We probably we probably gonna get some food after what this. What that? <laughs> I don't you know what you're talking about. Account. We 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 are in we are in debt. We we're not even caught up to Diallo's check yet. We we got well. I've I've heard because we we going through this more. therapy set. Nope, we got a therapy session for Diallo today, so he paying us oh back. Oh boy, oh boy. All right, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Come here, um. Oh yeah, Gigi, it's not even uh, the they're taking our jobs. The message is immigrants are taking resources, jobs that belong to us. When the jig is, they give they the government never intended to give back a black Chicago's anything. I mean, Diallo, I don't know if you ever answered, like, again, what, what are you seeing the sentiments of uh, Black Chicago people on the ground that you know? Like, what have you been? Well, the the Black Chicago is, is um, 
Well, the sentiments on the ground, I have to be honest, is relative indifference. Before <laughs> the um, migrants uh, started arriving here, um, we had a severe homelessness problems and homeless. If you look at the on ramps and off ramps of the around the Chicago Loop, if you roam around downtown, there was a housing crisis. One of the first actions that I was involved in. And one of the first groups I engaged with when I got to Chicago was the anti-eviction campaign. Remember, they were coming off of the housing collapse. And so homelessness was a chronic issue. And generally, Chicagoans were accustomed to seeing people trying to live on the streets and, and living under bridges and, and homeless encampments. So in the average black person, their day to day routine generally hasn't changed, you know, and and the, except for you know, it's just tends to be a larger number. But this is such a big and vast and broad city. Um, it's it's generally indifference because people are just trying to make their way through this fucking uh, uh, system in this society. But there is a vocal group that is stoking black outrage, that is telling black outrage that now your suffering. Your, your lack of resources, the divestment and the crumbling infrastructure is that if it wasn't for these people who just got here a week ago, a month ago, if it wasn't for them, you'd have everything you need. And everything that was about to come for you, like the day before the first Venezuelan, the bus came, got here from Texas, the day before they was about to cut us our check and give us our reparations. So it goes from indifference to outrage. But I think the outrage is justified, but the outrage is misdirected. So I think African people should, in Chicago especially, but across the globe, should be outraged. But I think we need to be radical in terms of directing our outrage at the true source of the outrage. It's almost as if Black rage is being laundered. Yes. Shout out to Black. Let's get it. <laughs> Um, Yo, I can't. I cannot wait for this joint to drop tonight. I have not anticipated a, a video more in a long time. I am. Yeah, yeah. It was misdescribed, I think, yesterday by by the wonderful, the otherwise wonderful and impeccable and flawless Kim Brown as anxiety. I. It is not anxiety. It I mean is. It, 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 oh man, I'm wearing the wrong shirt. I mean, if you and you and you know, or shout anyway, to, so, so shout real quick, out to TJ Whitaker and Renee Johnston and 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 the good folks over there at Columbia High School in Newark. Uh, yeah, but I cannot wait. Um, I do think, despite despite the the faceless experts that be in the comments after the video and the really important smart chat, and then you brothers, like we sometimes forget that. A lot of people, especially in the U.S., don't understand capitalism, imperialism, colonial, none of that shit. So That's sometimes all. we have to not dumb down our, our dollar. I mean, what is our, our lyrics? Whatever Jay-Z said. But we definitely have to kind of speak to and tie shit together for them. So, yeah, shout out to that. So, but first then, of all, but that's an important, even almost uh, serendipitous whatever that that. Because the assumption in Jay Z's claim that he dumbed down his lyrics, or when people make those claims, they're making the claim that they're reaching back to where people are in order to bring them to another level of consciousness. What no. Jay and others are doing is reducing any level of consciousness and analysis to a state to a state that will never elevate anyone. That's what they really mean to sell to sell and attract more of a, of an affluent white audience. That's that's the right. part they leave out. But I just just. That's right. You know, Spe shout out speaking to of, I mean, go ahead. Even yeah, go ahead. talking to my relatives, man, where people really believe that where they talk this rhetoric about they send in our money, they take America, America's always sending aid. They really believe that the United States is this benevolent and naive right. entity that's being taken advantage of by all these poor countries Absolutely. because the poor countries they they all they care concerned about is tribalism and they don't have democracy and they don't have Jesus so they suffer and the United States is always trying to build up somebody else's country instead of focusing on our own country 
And the palettes it's of the, the palettes. I think it's but, kind to say they're confused. They bet shit. That, that's, that's, but that's but that's that's why I was trying to position and obviously, but it could be perceived as Trump doesn't have a negative reaction to immigrants like his, this person have. What, what I'm you, saying, I know you keep making. I don't think there's any other body on this planet besides you to think this Trump no, is anything I, other so, than see, I think I think that's I think not what doing, he's saying. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying, but that's what Diallo do. But what I'm saying is just like you said, even your cousins believe that we are giving aid to these countries, right? If yes. Trump got on TV and say, well, we're going to stop giving aid if y'all keep sending these people over here because we're giving y'all enough money to take care of them, blah, 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 whatever. Like people can come to like illogical conclusions based off of this shit. Just like you said, if they believe I, that the U.S. is giving people, but aid, my point is they're being led to those conclusions. I didn't. They're being led to those conclusions by the Umars and the and the analyses that that the Umars are 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 by taking Milton Friedman's analysis and wrapping it in blackness. The, the the Umars of the world are holding are inhibiting the the critical analysis and critical engagement with all of this that that is necessary here, because obviously I well I, I think obviously Geechee is not saying that Trump is this that and the third he's saying through the false lens of popular media with the help of Milton Friedman styled analyses in 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 black radical spaces people will reach the the misunderstood conclusion about all of these different things and that's why I'm that's why I, more than I anything I am critical in these cases of people like Umar and others because again it's my students they're targeting just as my own personal experience who come into my classroom and they're spitting Milton Friedman and Donald Trump Trumpian analyses that they don't understand are coming from those figures because they're couched in the in in the blackness of Umar and others, so that's it, it. That that is my point about Umar not using his platform properly. I think and doing his audience a disservice <laughs> while he serves the very Milton Friedman friendly friendly algorithm that makes him, as he says, number one. Right. So, also here's the uh, the last one that that I guess Diallo took and. Again, I, I don't know how to when I'm when I'm sharing something, if it's not clear, I can try to get clear. But if I also get interrupted, sometimes I feel like I have the rapid fire. But go ahead. Diallo. I had another one that I starred. Oh, I didn't uh -oh. see the other. But you want to answer this? Do they put refugees in the white communities? Who's they? I don't know, bro. You can you don't want highlighted it. Look, you asking me. <laughs> Well, that would be my question to uh, oh, TJ. Who is not they? To not to um, me. To, the federal to, to government. To be honest the white with you, I don't spend much time it. in white communities. But um, <laughs> if you look at the dispersal, I would say it they, they kind of um, concentrate around population centers. So they are in some white communities. And I know Mayor Brand Brandon Johnson, he's a good Democrat, Savannah. I know... Uh, uh, Mayor um, Brandon Johnson was proposing putting them on the Gold Coast and setting up shelters in affluent areas and dispersing them more. But what that was kind of cu curious because on the West Side, in a lot of the migrant and Latino communities, established ones, they wanted to welcome them to their areas and say, hey, we have the resources to process uh, a migrant and vulnerable communities. So they, whoever they are, uh, uh, people who are handling the migrant crisis, I would say they're pretty well dispersed. But when you say white communities with, with a city like Chicago or New York, that's block by block base um, situation. So it's not like in some uh, other areas where you just have like a suburb or an isolated enclave where you got this vast swath of land because you could have a black, like the South side is black and then you have pockets of white folks and Latinos. So the the migrants are kind of dispersing. Many of them are going out to the rural area, but they they are more concentrated, as I see, uh, in in population centers where they where they have access to resources, and those are pretty diverse. Some of them are in working class white communities. Many of them are concentrated around downtown, and I don't know what you would define downtown in terms of a community. They're concentrated around. Um, 
uh, civic buildings, police stations and other government buildings where, where resources come. Um, I see them more so on the West side in the traditionally Latino communities where people speak the language and, and have more of an understanding of how to engage with migrants. So I don't think this thing, and it's kind of weird. We're like, yeah, put them on the white folks. Uh, they they kind of do like a lot of their, their human fucking beings. So just imagine yourself. If you went to a foreign land in desperation, if you had to go to the very nation that was had your country under siege, you would you would migrate to the areas where you can get resources, where people either speak the language or have some understanding of your culture. You would go to where if there was a uh, uh, American or U.S. expat community there. So they 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 act just like other human beings. They they go to where the resources are. So they kind of move. They're 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 quite mobile. And then again, they're also used as a political football by various political factions in this city. So they get, they get moved around by, you know, aldermen and uh, uh, civic leaders and even corporate or economic uh, elites. They get moved around in order to, to <laughs> inflate or deflate some type of issue or cause. So they are manipulated. But when I say they're in white communities, they're pretty spread out. And then when you see them in large concentration, it's really not whether or not it's a black community or a white community. It's more so where are the resources available to, to help them process, to get them food, shelter, uh, clothing, education. Um, they're, they're putting them out in the further suburbs. Now they're trying to disperse and dilute them. And so some of the far out suburbs, 20, 30 miles outside of, they're showing up in classrooms uh, uh, in, 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 in middle school and grade school, many refugee children are showing up in classroom. So it's pretty di uh, dispersed and, and pretty chaotic. A, a too. seat that a black kid could have been sitting in because the pallets of trucks, the trucks filled with pallets of money and resources slated for the black community, just as the driver's about to take off, somebody puts up the stop sign, they replace the label with black community, they put Ukraine on it. Just as they, they were put, about to make that left on just King Drive. Just about to turn and drop off the trucks of money and school seats and all of that. Here come... And, yeah. and can I say something? I ain't heard one person complain about the Ukrainian refugees. There can was a shit ton of Ukrainians who came Viala here Wait, and, and got hot. Via Gela, I think... If I'm pronouncing the name correctly, forgive me for mispronouncing. Is really, I think, putting this up so that they can get this question answered. Yeah, I know. I was gonna wait till Diallo oh, my bad. and I say something. Oh, okay. Finish. Oh, go ahead, Ken. Can you, can you well, say you something? Put the question ahead. up, which is you breaking the rules. No, I, I yeah. had to. I'm just we in the Q and A session. If, if that was to be, uh, <laughs> they had over thirty thousand Ukrainians show up here wait. in Chicago. I, the this. I haven't seen one of them on the streets. I haven't heard one complaint about the money and the resources, the housing and support, you know. So if y'all ever want to go in on the Ukrainians, I'll find me a, I'll get me a, I'll get a bootleg MAGA hat and come out here just for balance. You know, also after the fall of the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc nations, a deluge, many Greeks, remember when the Greek economy collapsed, they memory hold that. There were thousands of people of Greek descent coming to the United States. And I didn't hear one peep, not one peep. When I was in college in the 90s, I'd go into class and everybody had an Eastern European accent. Everybody, <laughs> half my damn class, the Epelboim and all these, these names with like 14 consonants in their name and not one vowel. And not that I'm, I'm just saying all like, People respond differently. All immigrants are not perceived. All right, but the, the real same. question All is, what, are not carried but the real the same question, though, Diallo, is Diallo got to finish his monologue. If you done called this man all these names, would you allow Dr. Umar Johnson to come on this show? Who, first me? of all, as if first I have anything to say, if I had shit. anything to say, half the people y'all didn't have on here wouldn't have been on here, In including including your uh, black Hebrew, Hebrew as you like. Oh, no, it would just be him, more of him. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, Umar won't come on the show until we get really, really, well, really, really big. No, honestly, 
I look I, again. I've been in spaces with him. I've endeavored to show up to a space where we were co-invited to to be there, and he wasn't for whatever, whatever reason able to be there. I think the real question is, would he would he accept the invitation? I think that's always, and I'm I you know no, and I hope, and I'm not accusing you of this, but I just in general, I hope this is not attached to this idea that if we raise anyone for critique or even praise that we have to have first a sought to 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 address them we're 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 responding to for the most part and i think with with some humor and maybe some pettiness but for the most part with principle and and you know you know respect even for the most part for the most part there there's there's where we're dealing with publicly stated political positions and and I don't think that that re- re- requires that we first have to check in or or <laughs> or reach out. Uh, but but just just so we're clear, it's not it's not, it's not for uh, uh, an unwillingness to on my part at least. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I would have in no words problem. Of, if, in the if, words if, of if little baby, Umar came through here. We ain't got check in nowhere. Well, you say with all that aggression not, and listen, in your voice, if y'all, I'm like over I here. Said, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have all that hostility. In my asking heart. me if Umar was here, I'd show up at seven o'clock and just sit here and 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 do do what I do. I don't care either way, but I mean, just out of respect for ourselves, you know. <laughs> I hope Fubar get one of them fake phone calls while we're on the air. <laughs> People, that was yeah, funny, yeah, yeah, I'm getting them. Yeah, yeah. You want me to lighten up on them? And then the phone rings. That was funny. Was that was some classic, classic. I'm in his debt for that. Man, I get classic. oftentimes when I'm down, I think back to the football hat phone call. And it brings so me, it, it, it let, lifts let's, my spirit. Let's, let's, let's transition from the Prince of Pan, African panhandling to the Prince of Podcasts. Mm-hmm. So Shannon Sharp has been talking about this Cam Newton situation. Cam Newton was in Atlanta having his camp, one of his football camps, given back to the community. And um, what actually happened versus what Shannon them report is different. So what actually happened, Cam was talking trash to one of the other football coaches. And the football coach wasn't taking it. I think it was either Steph or TJ Brown, who are brothers. And... They got upset. Cam said some shit like, "You owe me your life. If it wasn't for it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be doing none of this shit." And uh, the Browns wasn't feeling that, so the Browns, I guess, in an effort, tried to handle him, jump him, and you see him throw one of them down, and the other one never really got a punch. But anyway, so Shannon Sharp and his little peanut gallery crew immediately goes to blaming black children, right? So black children is that I, what I, they were doing? Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play a clip in a second. But they they blame they're blaming black children, and this little meme is coming up. Let me pull this uh, Chiron down. This little meme is coming up like it only happens in the black spaces. The black space black athlete gives back, and this is what they do. But the white space, you see Eli and Peyton up there when they give back. All the students are attentive and and they're doing their thing. But um, yeah. But so. I think wow. what I what I want to kind of talk about is one this concept of giving back, but then two, we want to play this uh play this clip of uh Shannon and Ocho Cinco, formerly known as Chad Johnson, um having their analysis of this whole situation, which is but it's queued up when whenever you're ready. Oh, I forgot I'm the button pusher. Damn Boom. right. Here we go. Push the buttons. Mm. Mm. Back. Yeah, you got to. That's the problem with us. That's the problem. And I ain't talking about nobody else. I'm talking about our community because that's that's what we need to address because that's what he was out there doing, trying to help that community. Mm -hmm. And you be disrespectful. And you've been that way with Cam. And I just don't I just don't know why. I don't know how. But parents, grandparents, uncles and aunts. We need to do a better job with the kids, right? Especially because, and then we understand. We, we, I don't know why they want nobody to hire that boy or that yeah. girl. I don't know how. I, you know why? Yeah. Cause they talk to you like you less than. So if they talk to you and they see you every day, what do you think they doing when they go on somebody's job? What do you think they doing once they get on somebody's job? Yeah. But again, the parent, the coaches, and the parents need to understand when someone like Cam Newton gives your player. It's not even football season. Huh? It's not even no, football. 
it gives the players an opportunity to display their talents and work on their craft in the offseason like this. You got to pay homage. You got to pay respects to one of the best that played our game. You, you, ha you have to. I show you know what? I tell you what you've never seen. Peyton and Eli have been having a camp for 20 something years. You yeah. ain't never seen no kids be disrespectful to Peyton and Eli. Nah. Tell, me, tell me the footage. Tell me the footage that you've seen out there. Show it to me. Mm -hmm. What Peyton or Eli asked these kids or the Drew Brees, because a lot of times they take up a, a, a lot of these pro quarterbacks and sometimes upper level college quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Show me the footage. It's mm -hmm. us because we think it's cute. I show a hey, man. I went out there, man. I told Cal to shut up. I told him he was trash. I told him he was garbage. Y'all think that's cute. It's yeah. not. It's not. And you wonder why I don't. I've been stopped wondering. Right. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's embarrassing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really embarrassing that somebody take time out of their day, out of yeah. their schedule. Out of embarrassing. Oh, thank goodness. Here's what the eight then. So, again, even even when the story came out and they say no, that was actually the uh, parents that was doing that. The coaches, he was like, "Well, still, some of the parent, the black parents are worse than his children." And never once did they say, even when it was it was told that Cam was antagonizing the other coaches, which they have a another uh, video of Cam. And so, but wait a minute, did you want it to go? Did you want it to go farther? Ten more seconds. No, nah, it, it's cool. It's cool. I, I think it because it, it just it just froze off. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we was gonna stop at ten fifty, but I, I don't remember if they said much else. But just just that that whole point. Because it was of, ten more seconds left in in what it was. It stopped at ten forty, so I didn't know if you wanted it to go for another ten. Nah, that's cool. But several times uh, he's saying Cam is Cam is not a regular human being, and he's dealing with these regular human beings. And they should be grateful because, <laughs> <laughs> because he's giving back. So yeah, what down the trickle down? First of all, uh, I'm not surprised this would be this would be the take, and then to negatively, because because again, commercial media can't wait to have black people talk about how black people are are the problem, and then to negatively compare themselves to to the great whites. Uh, first of all, we don't know what goes on at the Manning camps. I don't know. I haven't paid any attention. I don't know that there's nothing that has gone wrong. I don't, you know, whatever. I also don't know, to your point, if Peyton was, because from one interview that I saw with the with the two uh, brothers who were, who were running the camp, uh, it, it had been multiple days of aggressive and hostile trash talk from Cam. And this, I and that, it, and they, and they were depicting a situation where Cam was not being helpful, and was not being gracious with his time and his 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 ability. His to presence teach. is charity. His presence is a present, right? So, so now again, I'm not a fan of jumping people. I'm not a fan of of uh, uh, you know, but at the same time, Cam clearly has has a has a a, a, a skill set. Uh, when it comes to trash talk, and he, again, it went on for multiple days. So I don't know what was said, uh, but the, anyway, the analysis, that analysis I think is not, again, it's just not helpful, but it's very friendly to the big audiences that they get. Those those massive white sports fan audiences will love to hear. By the way, where is Shannon on his... Doll. When he's talking about what is on video, where is him on video screaming at a white athlete during one of their games or is this is this what he is his argument that this would not happen because no white athlete would trash talk him in the stands the way whatever that ball player was that he was screaming at and damn near walked out on the court for uh uh Actually, steroids steroids are <laughs> you know i know that anger you know management is difficult under all that them roids but but that roid rage is real but but my point is, he's over here chastising pu black public pr behavior. He was damn near ready to fight a man on the court, a professional basketball player, during a game, <laughs> in the middle of the game. Uh, right. All right. 
my bad. So you said, all right. All right. Yeah, the same video. I, it was another clip. But so I, I see the chatter in the chat. So one, the brothers who actually was tussling with Cam, they already talked. They had an interview. There's a mm -hmm. police report and all that. Um, yes, I do know how it is competitive at uh, at these camps. I've been to the camps when I was little. I ran the camps when I was in college. College. Um, I know that. I have. I have. But I'm also. I don't watch sports. So I don't know who's saying I'm watching sports. I know how things is and how they hate Cam. Mm -hmm. I do know that Cam, like Chad Ochocinco, who said in, in the video, he's a trash talker. And Shannon was like, I'm not a trash talker. I only trash talk people on my level. So he won't go trash talk kids and parents. He only tra trash talk NFL players. But Ochocinco said, no, I, you know, I, I trash talk everybody, but I back it up. So, yes, I do know that, but I'm not sure. I don't care how much money you pay me. You might, you're not about to come talk to me stupid and saying I owe you my life and all that shit. Like, that's not going to happen. So I don't know who, what story the people in the chat heard or what they're reading. But, you know, whatever it is, I'm not going to also act like Cam is benevolent. And as Diallo say, because his presence there, he's giving back. We should even talk about the giving back shit in the first place. But play with uh, what uh, Shannon says that towards the end. Yeah, this, this, this. Okay, here we go. You know, and you know what people that don't look like us saying? We ain't got to do nothing. Just oh, sit back. Fuck. Yeah. Just do it to the cell. We ain't got to do nothing. That's what they're saying, Ocho. You, yeah. Ocho, you know what they're saying. Yeah. Most definitely. Most this definitely. And then we get mad when they, anybody. Why? When you act like that, that man giving back. <laughs> he ain't going to stop, though. Cam ain't letting it stop him. This this definitely no, no, gonna stop. He's gonna he's gonna, he gonna keep working with the kids, man. He's gonna keep working with them, no matter what. Mm. Come hella high water, and I don't understand how anybody, Cam Newton, six five, six six, six two forty, he make the people he played in the NFL with look small. Yeah, okay. He oh, made Cam them look easy. small, and you you right. What you think he finna do with Cam? Come on now, Cam. On now. I mean, look, I'm two I'm two fifty ish three, Cam. Two three inches taller than me. Yeah, probably got me by Cam at least two sixty five right now. Easy, easy. Cam at least two sixty five. I would give two seventy. Still work out now. Yeah, still work out a little bit too now. But he not, he's not in football <laughs> shape. So, so again, he they they sound very. What are they saying about us? You know what they saying about us? <laughs> Hey, but he sounded like Eric Thomas, right? So I don't know if y'all saw that clip of Eric Thomas where the 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 black school he was at in DC, the black school they was in DC, they, the, the 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 students was heckling him or whatever, and he said, "When I go to the white students, all of them they they respect me. They want to listen to what I got to say, but only him, only my community." Stay over there. What you say? You got to come back into the mic. We can't hear you now. What happened to your mic? You don't mess up your mic playing around trying to be Shannon Sharp. Knock the wire out. <laughs> you sound like you in a in a in a water tank, something. So, but you know who you know who made that exact argument to me while he was that? temporarily at the university, who uh, Tim Reed. Oh. Tim Reed. We had this exact argument on the bridge outside of the school of uh, uh, communication, and I was Black trying to tell him. Manners. I was trying to tell him. I said the position you are taking vis a vis the dean and our faculty meeting we just left was incorrect and misinformed. And you don't even understand the argument that you stepped in the middle of. And he went into, the, he interrupted me, went into this whole thing about how when he was at the big white colleges, when he gave a presentation, everybody showed up. White students showed up. But when he's over here at Morgan, the students don't care. The faculty don't want to come around and support. And I, and I just said, wow, my man, I, I, I said, man, you, I, it was. I just was like, man, you really don't understand what's going on around here. That's and it's 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 wild to hear you take this position. But he said the right. exact same thing. They just don't. And you know what they say about us when we don't show up at a at a at a presentation when I'm giving a presentation. I was like, wow, wow, yeah, yeah. Can, can I? Say, so I I can, I can I tell you, like, Diallo, you still low. You don't mess your mic up. God, look at God. He did. He did. Look at God. Look at God. Look at God. Oh, so, we got so, T.D. Jakes on the run sheet, too, speaking of, oh, yeah, speaking of right. God. How, how about now? Can y'all hear yeah, us? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah, about yeah. now? But, but one second. So <laughs> let me hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I was on two sides of the this uh this camp, right? So I used to run the camp, like I said. When my politics start shifting, they, they won't allow me. Day. 
they won't allow me to they won't allow me to speak to the kids at certain camps anymore because of now what I'm saying. So at those camps, they're not getting anything but a, a hoop dream or football dream. They get to take pictures with Cam. They might catch a pass with Cam. He might defend them a little bit, and that's it. So this idea that you know, because uh, what what you call us? Uh, what's the guy name? Ocho Seco said it that this is your chance to me be seen. And so all of these kids thinking that they're going to go there and a scout is going to see them, no matter what age they are, the scout going to see little Jared catch the ball and they'll be like, I'm going I'm to recruit him one day. That never happens. So but so the, even the dream in, in the camp is just some some silly shit. And then there's a lot so of money. I was that supposed to go to Art Monk football camp. I, 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 didn't, I didn't miss my chance. Nah, bro. You wasn't going to make it. Sorry. I wasn't going to make it. Damn. Nah. Nah, they ain't, all these years, I thought all I needed was the Art Monk football camp. I was, I was all set to go. Now, now, now the, I think the hold on, say, say something again. Two, yeah. Now my audio is messed up. Tell I don't me know, to it's say not. something. You mute my mic and then tell me to say something. No, what I said Jared. I said Jared says something. So is, is my mic messed up now too? Is that what you're it's saying? Where, yeah, Diallo messing everything up today, man. Good Lord Jesus, Holy Field. Hold on a second. Umar, Umar, Jared, and Diallo. Let's see what y'all trying to do here. But uh, yeah, go ahead, go go off, Diallo. Go ahead. You. As a black person, any black person that has those stories about how white folks treat you better or white folks do you better, you have my permission because I know if in my life experience everything was better with white folks, I'd be over there with the white folks. I wouldn't even be available or around black people to tell them how good white folks was. Why not go? Because I've never had that experience. I've never gone amongst anybody outside my community and felt more welcome or felt better treated than I have amongst my own person. Anybody. Anybody, this is how you interpret that. Any black body that says white people treat me better than my own people, white people behave better. What they're saying is I conduct myself better around white people than I do amongst my own people. Why are you around us? If it's better over there, what did Dr. John Henry Clark say? Go over there and stay over there. Believe you me. Any white people out there that's a, that are down to treat me better than my own person, <laughs> send me a memo, send me a postcard with a return address, and I'm gonna come over there. If you ain't from my hood, you can. And, you, get and what is the her. point of going back? Like, oh, it's so wonderful over here amongst you white folks. But wait a minute, I gotta go over there with the colored folks and tell them how good y'all are <laughs> and how much more better things is over here. Why would you do that? <laughs> Who goes from a great situation to a bad situation to tell the bad situation how great the good situation is? They said they say Harry Tubman did that. That's what the Underground Railroad did. Around. You ever see poor people? You ever see rich people give up all their money and then come into poverty and be like, poverty sucks. You know, it was good being rich. And I'm just here to let y'all know. Stay up there. Stay over there. Stay over there. Shannon Dahl, stay your ass over there. Amongst where the white folks do right by you. Stay where, don't go. Why would you leave somewhere where people doing right by you to come around people who do wrong by you? That's Are they lying? Because that's never it, been my experience. That's why Look, Shannon told you, Diallo, he's going to uh, to the Manning camp next summer. He's not going to support Wonderful. Cam. And keep going and keep doing that. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's start with Jared. I, I, Jared. I don't understand that phenomenon. Because if Listen. I had that experience, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Jared, what's the, the best argument you have for this give back theory? Like what how do you trickle down the bunk or destroy green, this, this concept of giving brown, back? We all we all gotta down, give back. The money I call this down. this is my this is my Saswat post Katrina analysis. My man Saswat put me onto this. It's 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 all it ends up doing, whether people have the good intent or not. All it has it ends up do, do, doing is uh, defend the indefensible of this entire system that has all the resources we need and is only is only allowing a handful of people to enjoy them. So it it shouldn't be on even even in that clip we saw. I don't know if, if later on Shannon and Ocho get into a deep conversation about the political economy of philanthropy, but but. 
the I, even the idea that Cam should have to go back and that it, without the benevolence of the millionaires and the billionaires, we can't live. And that which allows for them, if if it's been reported correctly, to have that attitude of my my celebrity and my wealth is all that I need to give you. I don't need to give you respect and decency and actual education or training or skill. I just need to be around and be nice and provide this space for you. And then I can talk to you any way I want. Right. Uh, and and so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm again, our focus should be on this endless set of did you go out um i took you out i don't know yeah something's going on with my audio again so yeah. so i actually think Put that's very your mouth like shannon I, here you go i think that's come on bro what you doing what huh what you talk about man y'all be up on the mics i don't know the the, the modern mic technology has Yo, come a long way you ain't gotta be out, up on it bro. like that Chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. You, you, I don't know what's wild. going on. Do, are you even able to hear me right now? Yeah, we can hear you. You bet. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. There's something something lately. I don't know if it's an update or something, but it just keeps. Yeah. But uh, but as you said, as you said what you said, I I wonder how how <laughs> impactful is the propaganda of like, would you take dinner with this with Jay Z? Or a hundred million dollars, like the conversation of being in Jay Z's presence, will just give you some riches. Or there's another trend going around where um, people will run up to, I guess, celebrities or people with nice cars and say, "How did you get your wealth? And what do you do?" And all this other stuff. So I wonder if that type of propaganda is even more powerful to think that all we just need to be in the graces of these people who've been successful and they can just tell us something and we'll you know, get the bag or whatever. I mean, there's always been an effort to promote the the ruling elite as as deserving what they and having earned and with their intelligence and their hard work what they have and they're <laughs> deserving it. And we and that's why I you know, I won't say it's been 100% successful, but I have tried with my own children from day one. I, every time we see a nice house or a nice car or whatever, I try to point out like you shouldn't want that. You should be mad at them for having it. And it means that they did something shady to get it. And then when they say, and, and my daughters just asked the other day, well, 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 how should people look at the house we live in then? And I said the same way. And that's why we should fight for a better world for our own self-preservation. Because uh, when I lived on the other side of this very little tree-lined street city, I looked at this exact street I'm on now and was like, y'all are a problem. And right. now, you know, so so I don't I don't begrudge any of that. But anyway, but that's what I think all this is meant to do. It's meant to it's just meant to help us come back to this idea that the rich are deserving of it. We we are beholden to them. We should honor them and 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 try to emulate them as much as possible. So so you just made me think of something. I know you're reading um contextualizing Angie Davis, Angela Davis, and you gonna talk to Joy, but in a section where Joy talks about her parent, her mother and father, and how her they were upper class, they had resources, but her mother gave her a class analysis. And then so I, I was literally thinking to both of y'all, like, what is it like? Cause I don't I'm not sure the politics of, of your wife, Jared, but when both parents are radical, or maybe one are radical, and then how that impacts the daughter. But I wonder what you think about, I mean not the daughter, but the children. I wonder what you think about like. The parents' influence on the children. I know we talked about Malcolm and all of them, and I wonder if Malcolm and Martin were the radicals, and maybe their wife weren't, and so it wasn't reinforced or whatever. But I don't know. It's, it's well, big, but... Peniel Joseph's supported Genius National Geographic series, which is I'm still watching. Is 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 ongoing. I didn't realize it was going to be this long. Is is uh. And it's very well done, very well shot and acted, uh, devoid of all the important politics. But it's depicting Coretta and Betty as, uh, if not being overtly politically as radical as their husbands, as being the largely the font and inspiration of all of their courage. Uh, and uh, having uh, um, in many ways suppressed 
and sacrificed their own talents and capabilities for their men and their movements. Uh, so, you know, I don't, you know, but look, I don't, what I will say, and I'll, the short of it is, is I think that, that parenting is an exercise in powerlessness and that with, with, with few exceptions, uh, it is very difficult to get the, the end product politically that you might even want uh, there's a number of factors, but including the fact that the the state itself and society itself has a lot to say, if not more to say, about the end product of your your your, your even your own children than you do. Uh, but yeah, I'll stop there for now. I went off for a minute there. Yeah, my bad. So Diallo, I guess the the same two questions: the one around uh, your argument against giving back, and then the two like. The parenting versus the children being one or two parents being radical and how that might impact the politics of the of the child. I, I think uh, giving back is a fallacy. You don't give back to a community that you're a part of. Community is an ecosystem, you know, so the various components of that ecosystem don't give back. So the fact that you are in the mind state of that you're giving back, meaning you have detached from the community. And if you are detached from the community, you human beings being the social primates that we are, you are aligned with a different community or a different set of agendas and ideologies. So if you're giving back to a community, by definition, you're not a member of that ecosystem. You're not a part of that community. And so we have to ask the people who give back, what community have they aligned themselves with? Are they actually actively engaged with or have they defaulted to? And finally, in the terminology, giving back means you took from. You don't give back to somebody you haven't taken from. And so if you are a person who has a mass fiat in a capitalist system, you have amassed that fiat as a result of the hyper exploitation of the masses. And I say we should not pi passively as the working classes, as the oppressed classes, I say we should not passively await for the benevolence of elites, but we should take back. So I support the take back mentality. And if you are in a position where you or I can receive from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation or the Jay-Z, I think your mission should be to up in that system and use whatever resources or opportunities that you have to subvert the system. Because if you fall into and you, 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 you begin to work according to that system's mandates, then you are perpetuating a system of exploitation, even as you do good to help the downtrodden. So I don't like that giving back shit. If, if, if you are separate and apart from our community and also saying we should honor those who give back, fucking Rockefeller. Just one, you take one white oligarch that has given back more to the downtrodden than all these black celebrities combined. And I don't think any black person in their right mind say we owe a goddamn thing to the Rockefeller, the DuPonts, the J.P. Morgans, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we tend to understand this when it comes to white benevolence. But when it's these petty benevolence, like the petty capitalist, petit or petit bourgeoisie. So uh, uh, black folks, fuck giving back, take back. Like Wise Intelligence said in Kingpins, don't turn down nothing but your collar. I don't mind black folks taking reparations or taking resources from wherever they can get it. But I do mind black folks thinking that they have some uh, have to submit or have any loyalty or obligation to to the sources. Because people are just giving you a back a fraction of what the fuck they took from us as far as the take back. And what'd you say? Something about kids? Yeah, like this. I so we I'm Jared is well, both of us are reading um <clears throat> Joy James contextualizing Angie Davis, and it talks about her upbringing and how her parents were upper class. Um she had a well off, she that was pretty well off, but her mother gave her a class analysis because her mother was a part of the Communist Party. Her dad was more of a, like a business person. So I, I just thought about like one parent, particularly the mother, is responsible for giving her a class analysis that she had. But then I started thinking about obviously when you have no parents that are political, which I didn't have, but then maybe you have one parent or two. So I, in both of y'all situations, 
I, I assume Doc, I know Dr. Mingo has the same politics as you. I don't know Jared wife as much. And I just wonder how, what y'all think about like the way that the two or one parents could shape their children's politics. And does it necessarily mean like, for example, if Coretta and um, Mark Malcolm, I mean, I'm sorry, Coretta and Martin had the same type of left politics, would that increase the chances of their children um, having more clear politics? I don't think so. I, I don't think that parents can shape their child's politics, but you, what you can shape is their environment. You know, we, we set up the, the, the environment that our children, we, 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 we can uh, curate or cultivate up to a certain degree uh, what they have access to and what they can. I've seen some parents generally like their children are like Frankenstein monsters. They take all these components of things and put together and get the outcome they want. And I see other parents approach is more laissez-faire where, hey, do do you and find your 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 purpose and pursue it and I'll support you. So but irregardless, the parents that try to create a Frankenstein monster and already have their child's career, spouse and everything mapped out from them from birth and parents that are like, you know, keep you safe fed and warm. And other than that, you know, you, you figure out for yourself what you want to do. Um, <clears throat> generally, I think the success rate wouldn't be too far from random. You know what I'm saying? Like the, 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 the statistical era <laughs> side of where um, your child is going to be, because I've seen most of the children I've seen who've been indoctrinated from birth is through religious. And I see a lot of kids that are uh, brought up in the church and in the name of the Lord and all that shit. And I'd say, you know, it's really a toss up and roll of the dice, whether those children remain in the path of the Lord, because I was raised in the in the light of the Lord. And my sister and I are not very religious, where my youngest brother, he's extremely religious. So well, I think it's a toss up. I mean, I, I, I hear that. I hear that. But so I think Jared. Your upbringing, your parents had some level of politics. I think your dad was even more radical. And it translated to you. And then I would assume that your children are, as you said, the conversation y'all having. So I, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, but, I, but well, I was, but again, I was... I don't know if my father was more radical than my mother, but he wasn't present either. So mm -hmm. what I got from him was indirect and often mythologized. That's the best so, way to influence your son, real talk. I mean, some uh, that argument has been made actually uh, on a number of occasions, but uh, uh, sometimes it's been an attempt to make me feel better, but sometimes it's been also like, he might've done you a fa <laughs> favor by raising you at a distance. <laughs> Raising you. Through I, I mean, mythology. listen, dudes with absence fathers have the most wondrous fantasies about who their fathers are. Yeah. And I say that I as the byproduct of the fatherless did. home. No, no, I mean, I mean did. the fathers no who are there get all the smoke. You run <laughs> my life. Smoke. You're trying to run my life. If you're just if you're like Batman, you just show up, you know, like the fathers that swoop down in the in the middle of the night. Who was that mask man? We don't know. I'm telling you. <laughs> You go and talk to the people whose fathers aren't there, aren't present. They are like, my dad is great. He's out saving the world, you know. And, and then, I, so, but my mother, my mother even made it worse because she started it off by basically giving me the impression that he wasn't here because he was out there fighting the good fight. Like she even gave him even more of a of a of a ramp, and it was so. I was like, yeah. No, my daddy's not here. Why is your father here? That means he, <laughs> he, a punk. <laughs> he ain't doing nothing for the Come people. Home. Your dad's a lame. Was he at home at the dinner table like some punk chunk? Yeah. Like some like some sellout. How dare he show up and drive you to school while my father is not there? <laughs> <Punk> shit. <laughs> I, you're laughing, but it's true. It is. I grew true. up in a I'm housing not... project where like 90% of the homes didn't have a father there. And everybody had a father's story about how their father was a hood cat, how their father was a parent. We all had these one. Our fathers were wherever we wanted them to be. It's like God, you know, whatever you imagine, mm -hmm. whatever you want it to be, they become that. So, yeah. But do you show up every day, you know, 
screaming at your kids about using your deodorant. <laughs> you know, it's like it's hard to maintain the ethos. Like, God damn it. Your mama bought you damn deodorant. Cereal. What the fuck you using my deodorant? And I can't <laughs> use it no more. So them that I mean, how do you maintain that, you know, John Henry ethos? When you when you cussing your sons out about no, using your I should have left or... when my kids were like six or seven. I should have left because by the exactly. after they would have had a perfect. And then swoop down on a birthday. We going, we going the wrong way, guys. Wrong way. Wrong way. A graduation. That's the lesson of the day on DYL. Like fathers. On a, on no, a zip line. The wrong way. Y'all at six, out, your kid hit six and, and disappear. And they were like, where did he come from and where did he go? I'm telling you, absent fathers, man, get all and That's what we need. That's the slogan. Your kid hit we, six, hit the bricks. No, we going to the Q&A. Y'all, nah, we going the wrong Real way. Talk. Wrong, I'm not wrong, way, wrong, wrong way, Joe. Wrong way, Joe. any fatherless child about their daddy. Wrong way, Joe. Don't Y'all stay with, wrong. don't stay in your household. It ruined your legacy. <laughs> Shout out to my homeboy in high school who ran the wrong way with the football. Wrong way, Joe. All right. Uh, Geechee shot. Uh, I'm not shot. Geechee stop I'm saying, saying like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I'm reading off of stories, but and then this person was wrong too. I don't watch football anymore. Long time. Um. So yeah, I'm disappointed in that comment from Geechee. Blaming Cam is sort of falling for white supremacist framing. Geechee watches sports, which I don't. He knows they don't like Cam and enjoy smearing him. I mean, what, do y'all think but I was hard on Cam? But most of the, I'm not sure who's the they that's smearing them because almost all of the press I've seen on this has defended Cam. But I, I, think like talking about, I think you're talking Something. about during Cam's career. During Cam's career, they was mad about the black quarterback, which is a, there's an influx of black quarterbacks today, but I think but that's what does what that talking. have to do with, I don't understand what that has to do with what was said here today about this. I don't know. We maybe was smearing Cam. That's why I was checking. The Diallo smear all ball chasers, so I can't ask him if he was there. I smear ball chasers. Just negative, man. Because it's know. a bad, it's a horrible industry. I mean, it is. It's bad. Uh, much love We're waiting all week to <laughs> watch this view on Cam. How they know we was talking about Cam? What's one of y'all leak? Uh, run, run. Sham new. I, I don't know nothing about the dude. I get him confused with the, the Hebrew Israelite basketball player, the flat earth basketball player. Don't do that. Player. Kari, don't do that. I, even... I totally got them confused. You got Cam Newton confused with Kyrie Irving? Yeah. Cam is actually Cam was actually against um the knee guy. Uh what's his name? Um Kaepernick taking a knee. Kaepernick. Cam was against him, so I yeah, Cam ain't never stood up yeah, for no. I don't like man listen. I, I only way a ball chaser can come into my periphery is if they do something outside of ball chasing. There has to be some scandal or some shit. Because as far as they ball chasing, I'm completely indifferent. But I don't hate ball chasers. I hate the industry that they that exploits them and the rest of us. I don't Thanks like for the clearing, ball Thanks for clearing industry. that up, Diallo. There's That's a important. difference. That's Just important. like religion. Because your ass don't be sounding like it. All right. I don't hate bureaucrats. I hate the state. <laughs> Tim Reed to Jared. <laughs> this is why you will never make it on WK. You never make that's what he said KRP. to me. <laughs> no, but it was that. That's the. That's the good. It's a riff on the, the even the yeah. theme song. You, you know, young people it, ain't gonna get that. I know Geechee don't get it. He don't get it. He's too young for that. He don't get it. Is that <laughs> some more? Still... Listen, you know we we Let went almost heart. we almost went five weeks without ageism. But you brought it back. But we're going to take you to therapy. In a Ageism second. only goes up. It can't go down. All like right. reverse racism. Thank you, Cam. It doesn't Dude, exist. Man. Oh, Shout fucks. Out. We get to talk. <laughs> it only goes Cam, one way. Cam Doogie. <laughs> pillow talk. Uh-oh. Wait, we don't want that one. I don't think we want to listen to T.D. Jake's pillow talk, do we? Is that really a thing? I hope not. Well, Cam and May said again, ear hustling oh. leads to pillow talk, which leads to pocket watching, which leads to uh what's the conclusion i forgot the conclusion but something bad so in, inspired by nino brown charlemagne every year in monscona has a turkey giveaway and it's like people wrapped around the um the place for iphone so nino brown inspired a, a whole lot of people who poison their community and then give turkeys 
on Thanksgiving. Hey, I don't know what I don't know what we have left on the run sheet. I know I threw something very late in the chat at the end. I do want to make time before we leave today to 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 show my appreciation and solidarity with Candace Owens. So I I Candace, I mean I'm she, surprised she made it to Joe Button's podcast, but okay. Word? Oh, I'm not. I I what? am. I'm and then I, and then Cat Williams on Joe Rogan? Are they just trading coons? Is there a coons <laughs> trade? Cat Williams with Joe Rogan? Is there oh, a yeah, coons he just did Joe Rogan. Network? Wow. All right. Yeah, yeah. Fuck on. them. I coached in GA high school for 15 years. It's a hype camp. These coaches sometimes talk reckless to kids and parents. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a prosperity coach. Prosperity coaching. coaching. I love it. Okay. Shout out to Thank Gigi. You, Zizi. Yeah, Z yeah, appreciate it. Gigi. You. Oh, Zizi. And Zizi. why is why is Zinzi Bell always hating on me? You I can't I daughter. can't slip up without her. What did that mean? What was that? When I said when I said daughters, because I was trying to talk about uh and Angela Davis, and then you got daughters, and then I said daughters, but I meant kids because I know Diallo don't have daughters. But then she said, Yeah, you meant daughters or whatever. I don't know. I don't oh, know why she's trying to come for me yet. It's rough uh, over here. Yeah, man. Thanks for the program, Kenyatta. Thank you, Kenyatta. Straight Thank out, you. Kenyatta. And then, well, we got a whole bunch. You know, this house. Thank you, yeah, David Silber. Yeah, thank you. No, and again, shout out to Dr. James Turner. Put me on to it, gave me his copy after his basement got flooded years ago. And uh, I love that book. Uh, a great Marxist analysis of the Disney comic. And, Yo, uh, Jerry, fantastic. I don't know if I told you. I, I led a, a small study group. In general. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I mm -hmm. led a small study group of that book in Spanish in Costa Rica. Really? Yeah, it's a Spanish. They got a translate in Spanish. Yeah. I sent it out to the, and it was like four of us in there, but they they like they enjoyed it too. So and the Mattel like, Arts, one of the authors, Mattel Art, uh, wrote a, a brilliant book on communications theory that I I once uh, tried to teach uh, at Morgan, but. Uh, uh, when they still had theory courses. Hmm. This is rough. Ooh. This is rough. Yeah, that's difficult. Sorry. I'm sorry for you. Now I like again, like maybe three years ago, I remember talking to my my um or my grandma. White or black? I don't know. It's black, I assume. I well, that's a good question. But I was um I was talking to my grandparents who grew up who was in New York at the time, and I was in my mother's stomach when um Maurice Bishop was speaking in New York and they were probably like five minutes away from the place. And I would ask them, do they know about Maurice Bishop? And they was like, I don't know who he is. Then I showed them the video of him saying why the, the U S government said, this is the more da most dangerous revolution because they have black leadership and they speak English and like telling them about Maurice Bishop in Grenada and other places in Nicaragua was very humbling. You know, again, my grandmother, not my mother, um, but also speaking to my mother about when she came to Costa Rica, about the negative idea she she hears about revolutionary Cuba and and Nicaragua, or whatever. So I know for my experience what it feels like to have parents who have no fucking clue about much of anything. But yeah, so that 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 red Reagan is a little rough. I don't know if they've ever, you know, as far as they go, is uh, Barack. But not no damn rake. No, my yeah, I I mean, I remember I was very young, but I remember uh when Reagan took office, it was a like a collapse in, in our household. Uh well, well did did your parents see or watch him when he was a movie star or or or, or, what, my mother, what, what my like mother definitely knew of it. I mean, my mother uh, was uh, was big in theater uh, and okay. loved acting. So, so loves. I mean, I don't mean to talk about her in past tense. It's just that that dementia thing is real. So it's unfortunately the woman that's still here is 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 uh, very different. But but. Uh, so yeah, she knew of Reagan as an actor and she knew of him, but she was also a political person. So she knew of him also as a governor, as 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 a, as, as just being hostile from, uh, I mean, when she was a kid, he was already doing those anti-socialist propaganda pieces as a, as a B movie star. 
Uh, right. And so by the time, you know, so she she watched him become governor. She watched, and for her, it, this was the closest to, uh, um, you know, it was similar. It, you know, I was much younger then, obviously, but it was similar to what I saw people in in their disbelief at Trump winning the first time. Yeah. That it just couldn't believe that this clown, although Reagan had been governor, so it was a little more legit, but it was still this idea that this clown could actually do this. Yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, but yeah, but it was, it was very clear that this was a problem that, that, you know, I remember her getting on the phone, calling her sister and, you know, there was like a whole, com, you know, commiserating about how we're going to deal with this, you know, the, the, the devil in the white house, you know, it was like a, you know, that kind of, but, uh, Some, sometimes what I read about Reagan, I, it seems like Trump was reading Reagan and he's like literally trying to mimic Reagan and and yeah, he's got the good. same s slogan <laughs> make america yeah. great again as reagan's he's got some of the same you, you know i think didn't roger stone work for reagan at one point too weren't they all like i think he had some overlap in supporting reagan at some point so he's got it's it's the playbook you know yeah he running that play run the play what you about to say diallo not well you know my mother was a welfare queen so when reagan got in we were scared because, you know, I was on food stamps, Medicaid, HUD. I lived in HUD housing. <laughs> so I'm like, shit, I'm fucked. Even as a little, little kid, I just knew Reagan marked the end of the good times. And then who they took your mother's example and ran it as if it was you. food stamps anymore. That's right. Huh? Yep. No, that's what I was going to ask you. because shit cause all up. Because what we heard yet. about on TV was that it, your your mother and everybody like her was just chilling with 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 plush apartments and yes. multiple cars and in the sky high high. Yeah. Yes, we were we were living good, man. Shit was all good, and and Reagan came and just shut everything. I mean, because real talk. You know. And those good white folks up the street in those big houses were trying to help us, but it was because of your family. <laughs> yes, and all of that. My Resource mother was a bona fide diversion. welfare queen, and he said he came to office promising to shut it all down. So he yeah, did. Reagan was a was a nightmare got, for me as a kid. We got to get to uh, these last right. few so we can get to our uh, intervention and then your uh, Candace Owens love love fest. Who highlighted this? Jared, that it's was automatic. You? It's automatic because oh the, yeah, the, the twenty. Money, so thanks, Ross. <laughs> twenty. But is, it, is this true? Who that is? Coretta had influenced Dr. King early in the writing letters about Edward Bellamy's looking backwards early in their relationship. I re what I remember, I've read a little bit of of the 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 Taylor Branch stuff that Dr. Burroughs always talks about, mm -hmm. and I believe some of this is in there, and I believe I've seen this elsewhere as well. That that and it was also somewhat accurately, I think, depicted in this National Geographic series. Coretta. Uh, was not only was a powerhouse vocalist she was an, she was an intellectual she was uh, every bit if not more the intellectual than than king himself so I, I that rings true i don't know the specifics but that does ring true from my my memory uh and what little i've come across on that yeah shout out to the super sticker ten dollars thank you very much um and then right last oh i'm so i'm sorry zinzi since he said she was trying to defend me earlier, but uh, let, let me. But while you're here, that happens when you defend me. That's this just is what always you a get, problem. Zinzibel. No, but this is this is this is <laughs> that boy. Let me, let me, is, if biting the hand that feeds you was a person, <laughs> this guy Diallo is wild. No, but say, on, on, a true, on a true note, back to back to when the chat used to be like really mad at us. But on the screen, we have the private chat, right? We have the private chat. We have the brands. We have the banners, now we have the comments. And make excuses. No, I'm yeah, just what are you saying trying that, to, what are you trying to all, that is very all I'm clear. trying to say it's is you can't obvious. see every Everything message. Well, Diallo, I think you intentionally try to interrupt me so you can, you know, de delegitimize what the hell I'm trying to say. But oh, you I know this know. is true too. So when you miss comments, it's not that you're missing comments on purpose. There's a lot of shit going on that you really can't see the comments all the time. So if you look at your notes, you're not looking at the comments, but when you do see the comments. And I did say used to. Maybe they still do it. Like anyway, let's go to the next set. I think Diallo's trying to like the, the scare me away from. Yeah, put it off on me. Scare Sister me away from getting to the. So Diallo, we don't have to mute you for a second. Francis. Diallo, Jared, me and Jared love you, and we only. Yeah, I don't even. 
<laughs> what is this all about here? We're only here to have this conversation with you because we love you, right? So Diallo is getting us all of us <laughs> accused of Islam. Black Kobe. revolutionary taking the sisters that support you for granted. What are you talking about? I love the Muslims. What 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 Islamophobia am Diallo, I connected to here? Diallo getting all of us called Islamophobic. Go ahead, Diallo. We we trying to have this intervention with you because we love you. Not we're not mad at you, but what's going on with you, man? Tell us your side. This of guy story. came on and called me Islamophobic and an Orientalist. Woo! Last week when you weren't here. And Geechee was like, yeah, you are. And supported, dude. And, and was like, yeah, Diallo, you are Islamophobic. Remember when we had those uh, those, those uh, uh, Arabized Negroes on here talking nonsense and you was you wasn't nice no, to them? Yeah. And then dude went and made a, a, a video and was like, yeah, Diallo called Islam Islamophobic by his own co-host and he still doubles down, right? <laughs> And then the dude said in that same line, well, Geechee's Islamophobic too. And I Damn. said, that's what you get because you're trying to reason with the irrational and you try to double down. You talk about Arturo, that Arturo a name, dude. Yeah, that dude. Who be that dude. Slur, somebody called me a name and then you validated and you got hit with the stray. That no, mean, no. Okay. My but turn. Before my you turn. descend into Wait, the beef, no. real quick, let me just say just real quick, Arturo is not a, 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 he's not a genuine interlocutor. This dude, he he got at me and Todd. He called me. He called me a liberal Zionist in one of his videos. <laughs> so so this dude is not. And then when he showed up in the chat a couple weeks ago when I was here, I I, I invited him to engage and he dipped out. So this dude is not. He's out here. He so, is tro right, and I want to. I want to. I want to big Jared. time him like Roland Martin. Big time. Jared, does. but he, he's Jared, over here me, with his six Jared, and seven views. Wait, 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 wait. Jared, no, no, let me no. Put you it already to had your chance, like though. And I'll give you it over had to you chance. after this. But I gotta say this though, Jared. Imagine if he came on and called you a liberal Zionist, and you were like, "What?" And then I jumped in and was like, "You are kind of liberal <laughs> Zionist. -y. You got a little Zionism on you." Little Zionisty stink on you. So Jared, it wasn't that this Jared. dude was making outlandish and absurdist claims. Jared. It's the fact Is that he rubber stamped <laughs> and what the dude said. <laughs> that was my issue. I don't care about what Jared, your and your principle and your principal self that he would want to try out in the chat. I don't give a Jared, fuck about your that. principal self so when you only listen to one yeah, side. You is the little phobie, and I'm like, word. <laughs> that's what's my problem. Jerry, and your principal stand. Do you listen to one side or both? Both. Well, do, I, like I want to see the tape though. I missed that part of the show. <laughs> you asked for him. That's crazy. Oh, oh, he's. Oh, you only want to listen to one side. No, I want to hear. I want to hear your side. I want to see okay. the tape. You asked okay. Him for him. He didn't so ask what him. happened was, and Skip is here. Skip was there to attest. Once Diallo said phobia. And, and he said, I don't have an irrational fear, da, 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 whatever. I'm not irrational. And I say, there are times when you are irrational. And that's exactly what I said. And you can go watch the tape. Especially when he's talking about even people who are revolutionary, but also are Christian or Islam, Islamic people, or people who practice Islam. So that's what I was saying. And that's what I said. I ain't saying nothing about anything else. I asked him what his definition of it. And I said, there are times when you are irrational. That's what I said. But you know, Diallo got that air, that air dude thing, right? Didn't say, dude didn't say I was irrational. He said no, 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 no. See, Diallo got that air thing. He did it again. I said, Diallo, what do you Who call it? And you said, it, which side are you on? Whose side was you on? I ain't on nobody. side. I'm on the revolution side. Revolution. That's the side I'm on. So if your ass on the wrong side, I ain't with you. But anyway. I, that's what I want to ask. He called you Islamophobic too. When you were trying to get in bed because you brought me down he with you. you out. Your feet was your cold intervention. And your nails was long, and he kicked you out of the bed. And I'll see us trying to have this intervention. That's what happens in interventions. Floor. That's what you that's get. Well, how did you yeah. think the intervention was going to go? I, I was how actually trying to scroll through the other video real quick to see if there was a tag on it, like because. Uh, I don't remember he seeing edited that part. It out. You know how Geechee mess around with the, with the, in, in his little digital. Now I'm getting he accused of all kind of stuff. Diallo, what kind of mud slinging fest this is, man? 
Anyway, but let's uh, yeah. you know that, yeah. next time somebody attacks me, if you can't be on my me. side, remain they, neutral. Listen, I I wasn't on their side, and I wasn't yes, attacking. Yes, you was. We, the dude we was, said you was on his side, and if he wasn't such a scumbag, I'd play back what he said. You talking about he said? That mean it's you true? Want to play back? Umar said he the prince of Pan African. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Jump to Umar because you can You got to lose this exchange. <laughs> no. Jump but, over to Dr. Okay, Umar. here we go. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I think I found. I think I found. Let's let's take it to the tape. Let's take it to the tape. If I had to get candy, I want a sour candy before sweet. Wait, I, don't, what? I don't get down like that. Yeah, that, <laughs> what, 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 what is going on here? That is a loud for justified thing. <laughs> no. You like like brownies and shit like that. So I, just, I don't like sugar. But if I had to get candy, I want a sour candy before sweet. Yeah, what the fuck? We talk about pause, sweet. pause, pause. I'm talking about them shit that twisting your neck and your eyes up. That's, that's I mean, this is your conversation. Yeah. I'm trying to get but to you the had part too many where drop that you pull shit. up the last one. Here we go. Yeah, Diallo is an ori orientalist and an Islamophobe. Yeah. Uh, I say all the time, some things are so heinous that when you tell the truth about them, people feel a, that you're attacking it. Um, a phobia is an irrational fear. Am I being irrational when I talk about uh, Islamists colonizing, torturing, mutilating? Uh, well, sometimes, 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 sometimes. I can I, tell you why. Oh, I can tell you why. Let me tell you why. I think oh, you become I think you become irrational when you are speaking to individuals like a skip, a Jackie, a Salifu, a Musa, Lying who are as radical and sometimes more radical than you in their politics, and you are reactionary in their faith. I don't know how you that works. Call, I mean, you might be reactionary I, in their I'm, right? I'm not intelligent enough to hold no, 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 no. What I'm saying is you, you mm. ask me you, listen, you asked me are you being irrational? And I was just explaining to the irrational part. So the irrational part is you're gonna spend time trying to debate. People who you should even be, well, you do look at as comrades who are engaged in the same work that you're in mm -hmm. and are very clear politically where you need to go. So if, if it comes uh, a fight and it's time to go down, yes, a lot of your atheist friends probably ain't going to show up for you. All right, so, so what I saw in that little bit right there, Geechee, my man, you make I think you make a good point in the end, but the timing of it does come across like you supported, oh boy. Like you, you clarify it at the end. So this is what I'm saying about these bad actors we allow in our space because you let this bad actor drop this comment in there and mess up the setup and detract from what could have been a more sensible conversation uh, because whatever you were right in saying about Diallo's engagement with Salifu and whoever else is lost in the context of you having this dude's comment on the screen saying he's an Islamophobe and letting that be the jump off point and saying that you agree that, that Diallo is, is irrational at times. I, I was I like, wow. That. I take that. But my bias really starts at it being this dude that comment <laughs> that gets the that's starting all of this liberal Zionist. How dare he? But no, I in that clip, just just playing it that way, it does look like it's like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, Diallo. <laughs> Apology so sorry. rejected. <laughs> Irrational. That's Get my point. Irrational. You know nah. this is all on tape. You coming with the same thing? I'm just two weeks in a row. Get a new I shirt. Don't care. I don't. Got, but I, I don't do think. I, I I do think. Uh, I mean, I agree with. Uh, at the end of the day, though, I do agree. I don't think it's Islamophobia, but I think there are. I do remember watching that exchange with Salifu while I was sitting on the front porch in Panama, and I was thinking. Damn Diallo, <laughs> you, 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 it, it, you it, that's not the, that wasn't the approach necessary for 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 that conversation with that particular group, but whatever, it's all good. There we go. Well done. And we went to the tape. Clarified. Also, also, I don't think it's yeah. I, I'm, I'm glad you highlight that Diallo because I'm not like I'm not talking about all Muslims or whoever. I'm talking particularly his comrades and he's on the show with a christian and i'm just saying there's times when mm -hmm. it's not called for but go ahead you can respond to this since you highlighted that diallo mm -hmm. i'm gonna say like uh dmx said are y'all niggas crazy <laughs> um <laughs> my aggression towards muslims how much of the so-called Arab and Islamic world is colonized by African people this is just, I, I hate having to have this conversation like I said, what did I say 
that was inaccurate or wrong. Was not the slavery colonization, uh, mutilation, murder, dehumanization, demonization. I'm just going off of what they did. It's crazy to me that I'm being aggressive by saying this imperialist colonizer racist religion should have to be held to account for its past and current ongoing crimes against African people. <laughs> so what let the me, hell? Y'all got I'll, low racial esteem. Let me tell you yeah, something. Yeah, let's God. start with you in terms of the what do you how do you define Islamophobe? And let's see if everybody got the same definition. Yeah, or, or what, what, and, and, and peace to my written voice. Uh what's your so, definition? My my definition of Islamophobia would be sort of uh, the Orientalism and in the language of Edward Said's work for sure, but the irrational racist white supremacist uh, uh, dehumanization and dismissal of of Islam. But I distinguish that from. <laughs> <laughs> where I hear and often agree with Diallo's foundation for his, the critique of the relationship of Islam and other religions to African people. So this is where, this is the, this is this. So what I keep saying is, and it's similar to, to the other highlight that I, the other comment that when goddess is saying this is, but and I think in response to what I said about Diallo's, approach being inappropriate to Salifu and others is that she's saying it's his approach to all religious people. And I'm saying, and this is sort of what I want, would want to distinguish when I'm talking, what I'm talking about is, is the critique. I think we need to be able to have among comrades in politicized spaces about the relationship of Islam to African people and others and so on, and so, or religion to, to, to African people and others and so on. That to me is different from uh, uh, a broader, for me, and general critique of religion in the world and maybe religious, how people in the world engage religion. So in other words, I think the, the conversation with comrades needs to be different. And I think that the critique of Islam in, in its history and its relationship with African people in particular is not the same as Islamophobia, can it become perhaps, perhaps? But in general, I don't think uh, I think there's a a, a a a clear distinction. So, so I hope that makes sense. And yeah, go ahead. So I I actually would have, and I think that's why I was wanting to know how Diallo would find. But I would actually kind of like take irrational out. But I do believe like having like this prejudice position towards Muslims or people who practice Islam. Or, or having this portrayal that there's some type of um, monolithic engagement for all Muslims. I think that's will be the problem. Because again, there are literally people who you know got your back, you know down for some shit that just don't... Now, you might call them bad bad religious people or bad Christians, but I don't know. Let me check your head. Go ahead. I know people that got my back that are Muslims. Uh, my oldest, my two oldest brothers are both Muslims and my father is a Muslim. And literally, I got people in my life that, 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 that went to the mattress, pulling out gats on my behalf, fighting and shedding blood on my behalf. I have no doubts about that. But I also have people that I care deeply for that are pro-U.S., patriotic Americans, that are Christian, that are sexist. And I'm going to call that shit out, even if people who I hold dear that I take personal are part of this dysfunctional or regressive mindset or call out their beliefs and not their actions, right? Belief you systems. Call out? Huh? You say call yeah, out their I beliefs and not their actions. And You're I not calling their actions though, right? You know, one of my best friends from childhood when he was incarcerated and converted to Islam and he rushed to tell me, yo, you know, I've converted to Islam and I might position, listen, any person, regardless of how I feel about them personally, Conversion to Islam does not change the tenets or the historical impact or the contemporary political, economic, and, and cultural reality of Islam. 
So I don't care if I converted to Islam tomorrow. It does not change those facts that I articulate and that I stand on. Islam has been an engine of colonialism, sexism, uh, and, and African enslavement and African dehumanization almost from its inception, even though Islam was provided a refuge in Africa when it was at its most vulnerable. Islam is not the religion, the belief system, and the people who adhere to it have not. And all I'm doing is just telling the facts on it. Let me ask you this, Diallo. Support, I don't support persecution of Muslims or any religious people. You've never had, heard me advocate for or support any organization or institution that is persecuting people for their religious belief. Let I believe that we should engage people in their beliefs and their values in the arena of debate, discourse, history, and the, his, and, and the facts. That's right. where I engage people in, in my issues with religion. I do not try to disrupt people's access to worship and to what they want to believe or to, and I don't run up in their holy places to disrupt, but I'll be goddamn go. if I'm going to allow myself to be silenced when these religious organizations, these religious institutions, and so much heart uh, uh, injustice is, is predicated by and justified by these delusions. So gotcha. this is their free to spread their word and, and, and to practice their faith. I'm free to call it out for what it is and condemn it for when it's doing wrong. When is y'all wrong? here playing footsies with this shit? No, see, that, end up in that, the why you want to get into the monologue? And, and, why you got to get into and, the monologue? And be like, we should have listened to Bro Diallo. So again, I don't, I don't agree with that part. In this, that, that's in, that's what I think. In, I think, in, I think yeah. he get into a monologue and it's like press play and don't stop, and then all the things that he practiced. I, I, I thinking think and start listening. Wait, I, I, wait, what? Stop thinking and start listening. That's exactly so, what they used to tell us in boot camp. Exactly. Right. I'm trying right. to get and y'all it, to, to be revolutionary soldiers on the front line. Let, let, let me ask you, Diallo. General Diallo. General Diallo. You, Diallo, you, Diallo, kind, you kind of answered the question in your, little, in your <laughs> monologue. Your monologue, you kind of answered the question. but So when you have people who have rituals that are important to their psychological well-being. Mm-hmm. Do you find issues with them and do you, would you want them to adjust to your psychological comfort and not do rituals or these things? And this is no, what they feel they need no. to do. No, and guess what? How to blood clot what I know they're doing rituals. I mean, they How can do I it know? With- they can do it wherever. They can do it at a, at a community event. They can do it while they're around you. They yeah, can, but you if they're doing them. it at a community event, then they're opening it up to community scrutiny. And I'm a member of the community. Member huh? of the community. You're yes. a member of the community. Yes. And so if you're doing your rituals in a community event, then I get to call it. I get to say something on it. But but so I'm saying it gives you psychological comfort to give them discomfort. On, on what they need to No, it to doesn't be- give me comfort. It is an obligation that I have taken upon myself because I am in a world that has several compounding oppressions under genocide. And so when I see powerful institutions and organizations and ideologies and belief some systems that I believe that are harming my people specifically, but humanity in general, I have take the obligation to speak to it to tell the truth and to give a voice to the people who seek to, who are repressed and oppressed. Tell the truth as you know it, right? No, ain't no truth as I know it. Oh, so truth is truth. It's either true or false. So if I'm saying something that's not true about Islam, please correct me. And I will say, well, I was wrong about this. Anytime somebody can say, so, hey, so this, this is what I, but Islam one thing is not true. Is then but I will one thing that I think, I'm trying to but one thing that you do say that I think is not true about Islam is that it is that in the practice or hands of capable African revolutionaries, it has aided in some very helpful and progressive behavior and activity and still does to this day. So it's that community I'm most interested in how you or I or any of us would engage. So again, I don't have much to disagree with about your fundamental basis of the fundamental basis of your critique. It's, it's the, it's the, aspect of it it's it's very much the way i feel about 
when there's the critique of Africans engaging in Marx with Marx and Lenin, or it's it's I I just think in the it needs to in it needs to be acknowledged that in certain spaces at certain times with certain communities in certain contexts politicized, it has been very helpful. So when engaging those people, it it I think it is just rude and unnecessary to come in with the condemnation of their core belief, even if you rec so that's body language and audio language. But so let me ask you this question I too. Mean, I mean, it's, you know, so, so how do you feel what Jared said? Sure. Then let me ask you a question. Wait, huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, Go you ahead. Said I ask you a question afterwards. You said that I'm wrong because listen, you have to demonstrate to me that these black people did something conscious or revolutionary as a result of Islam or in spite of Islam? Because I know black people do good to go, do good things while they're engaged in something that is not necessarily good or healthy. I know like uh, Malcolm X used to call John Henry Clark a swine eater. There's a bunch of black folks who eat pork and do good in the community. Does that make eating pork good? Because, oh, I know pork, so I can't critique the chronic diseases and the ecological impact of consuming uh, uh, meat. As, and, and because, well, you can, well, there are meat eaters who do good. Yes, there are meat eaters who do good. There are Muslims who do good. That's there ontology are all versus epistemology. Might be engaged in or have some in some unhealthy or not. Ontology not versus epistemology, Diallo. I know a lot of good people in this community who do a lot of good shit and vote for Obama and really support Obama. And they're doing really good work in Chicago. And they've been supporting Obama since he was a, a state senator. So, but Diallo, you leave out, you, you misrepresent the Clark Malcolm. First of all, when Clark was saying that to Malcolm, he was saying it in the context of greeting his brother. Like, what's up, brother? My, my, my swine eater. He wasn't, and then they would build and, and move on. It wasn't Clark coming up on Malcolm in the context of, of condemning him for his Arabicized. Uh, a colonial enslaving whoa, whoa, whoa. belief system Wait, that if he and, would just no, rid no, no. himself of it. So, so I, when, and, you, when you reference that comment, which I've heard often, because he tell the story often, Clark was very clear. It was in the context of greeting his brother in the same way family or friends who are close comrades and friends would joke with one another, but not. It wasn't done with hostility and in the way that you approached, for instance. Salif food at one one morning or others that in, in in terms of this this uh the context of this show and how it's been discussed here so that that's an important distinction i think also needs also, to be also ontologically you have a better chance of proving that eating meat or or pork is going to be bad for you than you do that their religious beliefs led them to uh, that's wrong or right conclusions huh <laughs> what that's some bullshit the so historical you, so, so, record so, so, is very no, 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 clear no, 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 no. I, the I said, of religion and adherence so to religion. Tell, tell me what I just said. If it's bullshit, tell me what I said, because I, I swear you just heard you something just else. said that it, ontologically, I would have be better off trying to prove how harmful pork is than, than adhering to any pick your religion, religious no. delusion. No, no, no. See, I know that you hear me. So again, a Salifu, a Jackie Lukeman, a Malcolm X, I could just name them all. It, okay, for, and? You, for you for you to be able to say their religion didn't do shit for them and help them come to the conclusion. I didn't that say that. To, Did I ever say that, that? That's what it sounds like you say. I didn't say their religion didn't do shit for them. I said, can you prove that their religion was the impetus for the good works that they did? You would have to ask them, and they'll tell you. Sophia Bakari. And they did you, tell you us. Anyway, so my question, this is my question. Did you, Diallo, did you watch the video where we talked to Daruba about the day he got out of jail? Diallo would call that BS. I don't know. So I want to call it BS. Daruba, I think, wants to call it BS. <laughs> but but I'm just saying, so so to, to that point, though, Diallo, like people do believe that these moments of engagement with a particular religion or belief system are the impetus for this or that good thing or this or that behavior. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I, 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 so yeah. So Diallo, quick question. You're, you, so the monitoring, the monitoring, the controlling, the curtailing of the rights of Muslims clearly state 
you agree or disagree with? From day one, I was in New York City when the Twin Towers came down. And the Pal and Brooklyn College had a Palestinian student organization. And they called me because they knew there was about to be a wave of repression coming down on Muslims. And they were putting young Muslim men, and it wasn't even all Muslim. They were putting anybody swarthy, anybody that's, that lo looked Middle Eastern, quote unquote, on these barges out in the middle of the water. And I stood against that. I stand against the Muslim ban, banning people because of their religious faith. I stand against uh, uh, any type of religious repression, any type of religious uh, prejudice or abuse. I also stand against being suppressing the truth, suppressing the history, suppressing the reality and facts of the impacts of the religion. I also stand feel that we don't have to accept or articulate someone's delusions or, or, or even sustain or accept someone's delusions just because they're held deeply in their heart. If you choose to adhere to an absurdist belief system, whether, regardless of what good it does for you personally, then we have a right to call it out if you make it public, especially right. if that absurdist belief system isn't just absurdist and false. But it also has a long history of institutional racism and enslavement, colonization and oppression of my people. So I have no irrational fears of Islam. I promote no irrational stereotypes of Muslims. But yeah. I will speak out and speak up against the institution and belief system and history of Islam until Islam truly does become a religion of peace as do, it relates do, to African people. Do you believe that? the treatment of Muslims or people of an Islamic faith is likened to what Dell Jones and other people say, like the niggerization of, of African people. Do you think there's a correlation between that? I don't, I don't understand that. Like, so, so the, the demonization of, of black folks, just as well as the demonization of people who practice the faith, would you say is some, there's some equivalency there? How people treat Muslims is the same way how African people have been treated, particularly in the U.S. I still don't understand. Are people, black people treat Muslims? No, 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 no. I'm saying the, the people, people in general, just as people have niggerized African people, right? Have oh. Bell Jones talk. Do people do Muslims like that as well? Who are do you people? see a correlation? See, first of all, Muslims. The same people, the same people you was able to accept, yes. In terms of niggerization of black people, it could be white people, it could be the Europeans, the West, all, whatever. Yeah. You can't talk about black people versus Muslims because many millions of black people are Muslims. So I can't speak about the treatment of black people and juxtapose or, or compare and contrast that to the treatment of Muslim people because there are Asian Muslims, African Muslims, white Arab Muslims, they're all Muslims of all races. So you can't compare the treatment or condition of African people to the treatment of Muslims. How do you do that? There's too many lines of that. I mean, you're talking, you, you're comparing a, a, a culture, ethnicity and race, nationality. So I, I don't understand how so, I would so, answer that question. So, so basically you're saying black people are not a monolith, right? And just so as well as Muslims aren't either. Uh, right. Depending on what context, if you're talking about black people in the context of racism and oppression, we are a monolith. Where do we go to, to be free of, of, of anti-blackism and oppression? Where is the sanctuary for black people on anywhere on planet Earth? So in some conditions, in some in some statuses, we are a monolith In other statuses. No, we are the most diverse people in the world. But in the where the shit really matters, where the shit where shit really uh, matters, we are monolithic in terms of oppression and our need to unite and get liberation and the and the paths and the and the solutions to all our problems, no matter how diverse, whether you're in a Haitian slum or the or US project. I have no further questions. Go to Canada. Further question? What's the first question? I did I just don't understand. Listen, you answered the first if a black person first, wants to be a Muslim. That's fine. I do not go into black Muslim spaces and bother them. I do not go. Wait, 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 wait. What, what is black Muslim spaces? Them. Wait, wait, wait. What is black Muslim spaces? The mosque. There's a mosque a few blocks up from my house. Mosque Miriam, the NOI building up the up the block. And then, but and then when, when to my space, into my arena. Wait, wait, wait. You got space. your own space. You got yes. your own space and then black Muslims got their own space. 
I know I don't have spaces like the Muslims do. I wish I did. I I'm wish y'all gave me. I'm, I'm confused now. Like support as y'all so, go to this anti-African belief system. So black black Muslims only can to you. They only can be in certain spaces. Other no, than that. I did not say that. You didn't allow me to finish my statement. Maybe it would clarify if you would maybe maybe stop you know how I feel. And start listening. What I was Maybe. saying is, I do not aggress against Muslim people in the practice and exercise of their faith. I don't run around and I am against harassing people. If somebody wants to walk up the, down the street on a burqa, hijab, kufi, whatever they want to do, I don't bother people. But in certain arenas where we're having discourse about African oppression and a big component, a cornerstone of African enslavement, colonization and oppression is Islam then I'm going to talk about Islam when it is relevant and in the proper context. But I don't harass Muslim people. Muslim people seek me out. There's a brother from the NOI that wants to debate me. They seek me out. I don't go to their spaces. But if you come to where I be at, or if I'm somewhere and somebody says, well, we're having a community meeting, we're going to pour librations, we're going to give prayer and thanks, then I feel as a community member, and a person who's there represented and trying to contribute, I have a right to speak about, well, y'all pouring librations to ancestors and y'all praying to some, you know, Abrahamic God, then I think it's on the table for us to express ourselves. So I won't suppress that dude from bumping his head on the floor. But if you do it in, in my space and where I be at, then I've, I've, I reserve the right to articulate my beliefs and articulate my views on it. That's all I'm saying. If I go somewhere and I sit down and commune with people, but I go somewhere and be like, I'm a vegan, God damn it. Or I'm an atheist, God damn it. And you can't none of y'all say nothing about it. That'll offend me because that's what something I believe strongly in veganism. If I put it out there, then I'm opening it up to people to critique. Some dude came to me and said veganism is an eating disorder or some shit. And I ain't going to fight with and tell the dude he don't have the right to say it, but I can debate him on the accuracy or an inaccuracy of his assessment. And Islam is a male chauvinist murder cult. And I don't want it to be that. I wish it wasn't that. But to the extent that it is that, I'm going to continue to call it that. There we go. Mic drop. Um, the, I'm not Diallo. Jared, you want to get to your... Uh, praise of the Candace Owens. So, yeah, it's just, it's tough to follow all of that, but <laughs> but uh, I did get sent this also uh, recently. I think just this morning, and I thought it was funny. So you know that there was this this. Uh, so apparently, Joe Budden on his very popular podcast invited. Candace Owens to sit down for a discussion. So apparently that has happened. And for those who are familiar with, with New York radio or hip hop history, will be familiar with the with the uh figure Peter Rosenberg uh at uh uh now I can't even remember what station he's at. What station are they at? Anyway. But he had issues with Candace being invited to Joe Budden's space, basically saying, why would you invite this reactionary conservative to the space? And Candace responded basically, Hot 97, thank you very much, chat. And Candace responded by saying, uh, <laughs> calling Rosenberg a plantation supervisor, and and said basically stay out of black folks business if two black people want to sit down together who is rosenberg to get into it uh and 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 enter the discussion and the one part where so in all jokes aside the one part where i do agree with what she does bring up here is uh Rosenberg's long-standing relationship to commercial radio, because this is a critique I've actually offered of him when he previously was critical of Jay Electronica for praising Farrakhan uh, and a couple other instances, but, but also made a point about Rosenberg's father uh, being a, a Democratic senator, uh, Capitol Hill apparatchik, and supporter of APAC. Uh, so it's like, who are you 
And to me, of course, this is not to say that Candace is is right or should be defended or her politics or blah, 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 blah. But for me, it is to point out the contradiction of what presents itself as thoughtful, liberal, progressive, uh, sometimes even radical commentary, where it's easy to step out there and say to Joe Budden, don't support and engage Candace Owens, which is actually correct. I think that's actually correct. I mean, she doesn't need enough, one more platform and friendly place to go. Uh, but, but it is disingenuous when not only working for Hot 97, one of the most notorious outlets for dispersing and distributing and popularizing some of the worst forms of, of, uh, uh, anti-black, anti-progressive, anti-woman, anti-thoughtful music, but then to sit there, uh, while also defending Democratic Party politics, uh, to the extent this is accurate about his father, which I, which I believe, because this is not the first I've seen this, this Zionist conservative politics, to to uh, uh, and then to present yourself as a legitimate purveyor and commentator and spokesperson for black cultural expression. I mean, those contradictions, I think, are, are, are overwhelming. So again, it's not to be, you know, again, this is obviously not to be supportive of Candace Owens, but it is, but it you is are to point being, out this. So. <laughs> I'm not being supportive Last... of Candace Owens. I'm saying I'm being, I'm being, I'm being supportive of the critique of the space that takes advantage of Candace Owens to just to, to position itself as a legitimate opposition and hot 97 and rosenberg are not legitimate political opposition to candace owens they are again a false representation of what should be the legitimate opposition who also so don't platform right the legitimate I opposition so again they take it's again it's easy to take shots at candace owens while defending genocide joe I, go ahead. I, go ahead. I, I, I'm still struggling with that candy on I mean, Joe Buttons. I got to see that. Of you, of, of you gushing over uh, and defending uh, Yvette Carnell, man. When did I gush and defend her? <laughs> you were there, Geechee. Don't bring well, me into this. I don't remember. Up. Stand up. When was this? Oh, Justin. yeah, yeah. He, yeah, you did it. You did it. You did it. Yeah, thank you. Gosh. Sometimes I what feel did like. I do? Wait, hold Wait, up. I don't I don't even hold up. When I when I was asked to comment on what I wasn't here for, I brought to the tape. You got it. I mean, you take gynocentrism to a whole nother level. Oh, As a fellow man. gynocentric, you take it too far. You're a gynocentric. Let me look for the tape. Let me look for the tape. What did I do defending Yvette Carnell? So coming off the hills, I can take one or the other, but this back to back is like, come on now. Listen, Yvette and Candace <laughs> Here, you're about to do it now. Go on, go ahead. Deserve <laughs> our respect and defense as they fight the good fight, as flawed Thank vessels you. as they may be. These are our sisters. Listen. I mean, I think I think maybe gynocentrism too far. Maybe Yvette might might oh, be Jesus. having a good I mean, you think Yvette and Candace the same? No, I think Yvette is worse. Oh. Because Kwame Ture said a half truth is better than a full lie. So Candace Owens shows open contempt for black people. Whereas Yvette claims to be on our behalf and represent and want to advance us. That's so fair. a motherfucker that hates us but pretends to love us is worse than a motherfucker that just hates I, us and be honest about their hatred of us. That's fair. That's fair. Well, I, I In guess. In many ways. Everybody so, says yes. the the, uh, the weaker enemy and the less of so, evil. Yes, I would say Yvette can can shows up spaces and gets more accolades and love from the community than Candace. Candace is butt naked, booty blessed, as wise intelligent would say. She's out there and ain't no qualms about it. So yes, I would say even though Candace Owens' rhetoric is worse and her mm -hmm. positions are are worse, they are naked eye, and you can't 
claim to support or, or, or be down with clandestine and still pretend to be on the side of African people. Whereas there's a lot of ADOS people claiming they represent our interests. Tell me this. Do you feel like way, I mean, do you feel like way about when tone, you start playing tone footsies with Yvette? Then two weeks later, you completely in the bed with Candace. So be careful. Do you feel like way about Tone also? Who? Tone who be with Yvette. Yeah. You do? Yes. You don't think but Tone, Tone oh. see, here's the thing about Tone. Tone leave me alone. <laughs> I ain't never bumped heads with Tone. So he yes, but it's all the same. It's really ADOS. It's the organization and it's the ideology. But Yvette, man, she yeah, you don't think Tone a little more rational than than him? He seemed like he could be debated and and shift a little bit. No, he wasn't with me. I mean, he wasn't as overt and aggressively hostile with me as she was. But he, uh, at the time, took a few shots on his radio program, and he never was willing to engage or invite me to have a discussion. So, mm. so in practice, he was no better. But he was he wasn't. I don't. But I, what I remember is that he wasn't. It wasn't the same level of, of overt hostility, but he, you know, uh, but he was clear the, in the few times that we did talk even off the off the record. I mean, Tone was was clear to me that he he was clear that he didn't feel he had anything he could learn from me. I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. Uh, but he but was not I think overtly we get, hostile. We, we, uh, uh, it's kind of like who said something? We 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 have trouble with with these slick. We we real good with these obviously bad racists, but these slick racists make trouble for us. Somebody said something. I can't remember who said that. Like these these slick like Colin Powell is much worse than Clarence Thomas. You know, because Clarence Thomas no illusions. Colin Powell. Oh, he's you know so yeah I, I I do think a half truth is worse than a full lie. Yeah. I so these that. these these rabbit coons are much more worse than the than the sl- snuggly fluffy coons who we think you know we can. What about the rats? What about the rat coons? What about the rat coons though? You know the rat. They're coons. the worst. <laughs> rat coons so. are the worst. <laughs> but yeah. rat coons. They're a special layer of low. You don't want to be a rat coon. <laughs> Jared think he off the hook. He jeffing with Clandis and 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 uh Yvette. You just said Clandis. Yo, you be having you know, Clandis. <laughs> he be having them little hot takes. I mean, that know. woman is I man, she's disgusting. She, you she saw is. when she had that baby, and all of her fans were in the comments when she posted wait, her baby, baby calling her but baby. See, but see, but do you but do you do wait, but, but do you do you do understand that and that? A baby, dis- a wait a minute though. Despite his whiteness, I'm making the same argument that you're making vis-a-vis Rosenberg. My point is, he pretends to be the liberal, the progressive, the 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 legit spokesperson for hip hop, and then will but but is only using Candace Owens to be projected as the authentic, legitimate spokesperson. And I'm saying she's right to call out, or any of us would be right to call out, but my man, you have way too many contradictions here to be standing on her conservatism to pre- to, pre- to project yourself now as the... the. So in, in this regard, this is what I'm saying. She's better than Rosenberg because she's overtly hostile. He is. I'm your friend. I'm your ally. But, but the conflict the one... is 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 him criticizing Joe Button for having her on. That that's the that's the the conflict. That's the initial. There. Well, that's what drew her attention and ultimately got it sent to me. Was that yeah? He's saying Joe Button should be yeah, giving her I mean, access to the airwaves. Who listens to Rosen? Like. Here we a are. lot of we, people on Hot 97 for a long we'll time. we'll sit here and condemn it and ain't nobody going to pay attention to us. But yeah, I, oh, I, I just think... We're it, about to break the internet with this one. You crazy, right. Diallo. The whole thing... We're about to go Cat them. Williams with this and, clip. Right, but that's... <laughs> and I and, and shame on Cat Williams for going on Joe Rogan. Man, where I been at for a week, man? I, I ain't seen none of this. You didn't... I saw you that it happened. You should have been out church shopping. <laughs> I don't got money. Can you send me some money? You want my cash app? That's true, Diallo. He doesn't make your. He doesn't. He doesn't make I, your I, salary. We you don't want to. I'm gonna put Diallo. my cash. Spend all that money on being a passport, bro. <laughs> yeah. Actually, ac- actually, I wasn't a passport, bro. I, I was a buddy. I was a buddy pass, bro. 
Don't get mad at me because I got buddy bashing. Thought huh? you could find a submissive traditional woman who but truly yeah, appreciated Keonti, the black man. Ben Geechee, and Cat Williams was on Joe Rogan. Hey, well, since, since Diallo poor shaming me, Diallo, you can send me some money. This is my cash. Right? I'll send you some. How much? You can yeah, whatever you want. Shit. How much shirts cost? How much cost? is a shirt? How much is a bootleg? I think three hundred and fifty dollars. I think. Huh? I think it's like three hundred fifty dollars. Three hundred fifty dollars for a shirt. Oh, I'll send you a shirt from African World Order. No, I don't want none of them. I don't got one of them shirts. I don't ran out of them shirts. I used to wear your. See, don't bite the hand of fed you. I used to. You remember I used to wear your shirt. You used to tell me it's a nice shirt. Now you saying I was gonna send you one for free? Just listen. You ain't about to pull shame me on public television. Just send me the money and be quiet. On public television. <laughs> yeah, that's how he was talking to them sisters. <laughs> I ain't one of your women on your track, man. I ain't a member of your stable. You can't talk to me like that. I'm just saying, I ain't got no stable. Bro, See, the all, you did, all this slander, man. It's the slave, the uh, the uh, stable, the women, and the poorness. I ain't never see a poor, poor passport bro with with women. I just ain't never seen that in my life. So you got you got to make up your your mind. It's one. So send me that money, and then I'll get a new t shirt next week, and I'll I'll you come. You said you never seen a poor passport bro with women. Yeah, I ain't never see that. Then so you got money. Get, I ain't got no money though. Then there are poor passport bros. Oh God, here we go. Anyway, man, we doing the Q and A, and then we out of here, man, because Diallo is tripping. Yeah, I gotta go downtown. God, Shout out to Joe, Thank Joe, you, Nate, Joe. Peace. for that twenty twin twin. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I we addressed that already. Oh yeah, you already did this. Mm. She didn't put no mm. name on it. She's talking about Geechee and his Islamophobia. Maybe I don't have it. No, we, we addressed that one already. That's my uh, people. All right, uh, we DMX, didn't address this one. DMX was a fucking. <laughs> my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he, he was bad at it. Shit. He prayed to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> man, DMX. Was, no. Man, he was really bad at Christianity. He sucked at it. Wait, Diallo. Everybody gave a definition. Did you give yours of, uh, of what? Of Islamophobia. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I, I I I thought we dealt with it, so I understand. Oh, oh, I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna leave it alone. You go ahead and take over. No, but Diallo, you can get one real quick. Huh? You say what? I'm so and uh, listen, African people as a whole, we're Islamophilic. So I'm trying to balance it out. Oh, okay. (laughs) I mean, again, I think being anti-religion is now I agree. Wait, wait, wait. That other one though, I agree with that other one though. In 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 up to a point, I think I agree with at least some of I missed the that. other one. Gigi's too fast. It was something Not about calling you anti, it, 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 calling you Islamophobe is, is akin to calling people anti-Semitic for their criticism. F- calling you an Thank Islamophobe you. for your criticism of Islam is like calling people anti-Semitic oh. for their criticism of Zionism or, or something like that. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I think I don't, that's I mean, insightful. That's why he took it down so fast. No, because and we remember the one on the who called. I, I don't. I don't. I've, I've never had a. I've never had an issue with any argument that you make about religion, other than, like, if you the say one, something about a verse, and then I might argue it. But I'm talking about the particular people that you decide to engage in that particular way. It's just wild. It's, it makes no sense. I agree so, with that too. It's That's just yeah, they got Allah. They got the Almighty Creator oh of everything. Well, let, let them have Allah. Let them side. have Allah when they show when they, they show up to keep the people with you. Let them. They have don't Allah. need your help. They got the prophet and well, and they don't need my help. They don't need. They don't need your help either because you think you're helping them. They don't need Gigi. But you think you're helping them, so they don't need your help either. They good. They spiritually versus God. You trying to get them? You trying to get them help? My bad, Jerry. What you about to say? What you about to say, Jerry? I don't even remember. I don't know. Diallo trying to uh, uh, anti save people. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, Wait, I, would, I, I would. You can't even separate religion from revolution. Uh, Who can't? I, 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 I. My initial reaction to that is to struggle with that because I think you can, and I think you can also say not only is it separate from revolution. It's been used to suppress revolution and antagonistic. So yeah, maybe that's the so, repression you use. Like, yeah, you but, can't separate religion from revolution. True, because if you're a true revolutionary, you will engage with the oppressive revolution of religion. So, but we would yeah, also I have agree. to acknowledge that some have used religion to inspire revolution, Diallo, and that's the group that I think you could talk to differently. 
No, I can't. We have to acknowledge that. Oh, you can. You I won't. cannot. Here's so the you thing. Think, you won't. No, so seriously though, thing. Diallo, you think meeting Malcolm X in his life, it would have been appropriate to 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 meet him and continue. Yeah, I would have been and, Malcolm. Get out that goddamn cult, man, before they kill you. That's what I would have told Malcolm. That cult Nation of Islam with, versus is Islam. There's but, no Yaku, uh, never mind. no eyebrows, okay. hair texture of eyebrows. Yeah, but he had already Malcolm. left. Malcolm. But he had already left. There. But he had already left oh, and was Matthew, still a Muslim. Like, Thank you so much. But he met a Muslim. He was that, still. That pernicious but you would have been meeting a Muslim. I'll join your group. I won't join but your you, cult, but I'll join your organization. But you would have. But you would have been meeting let's, a Muslim. Let's talk about something more important. But wait, though, I'm saying you would have been meeting a Muslim. That what I'm saying is, in the way you just described, into engaging would have been more or less appropriate. But you're, right. we're, I'm saying you're engaging Muslims who are in who are endeavoring to behave as a Muslim at, as Malcolm did in a very, in the very way you would engage in, in, uh, an uh, uh, Arab enslaver. And that's the distinction that I think. Yeah, uh, I, I would have to. Yeah. Now the flaw of the, well, the flaw of this whole thing is that again, we started with, with you being called Islamophobes from yeah. someone who is engaging these spaces as uh, a, a fraudulent actor, so that's mm. that's the that's one major problem here. Uh, n notwithstanding all the, the the good folks who have engaged the discussion since then, but I do think the, that initial comment that was pulled up last week is from somebody who is disingenuous to their core. Uh, so we should also just keep that in mind as we have, you know. Okay, yeah, into the sweets well, comment. Hey, I, I would listen. I would Jared tell gotta, Malcolm, you got to enter this. If I met Malcolm, we wouldn't have had this issue at all because Malcolm would have left his religion at home. He'd have kept it in the closet. So it wouldn't even have come up. No, you just said you would say, his leave their religion, religion man. They're trying to kill you. That's what you just said you would have said. Huh? You said you would have walked up to him and say, leave your religion at home. I mean, you know, you said, uh, quit that religion. I have to no say that. Well, I didn't know which which manifestation, which Malcolm. I didn't know if he was dealing oh. with, with, with Detroit Red. Uh, Malcolm X, to put hands no, on El Hodge. El Hodge I, he Malik. didn't say which Malcolm, so I just picked the Malcolm that I I was thinking about. Oh, well, Jared, but he was talking you, about you, cold, cold sweets? Malcolm. No, I do not. No sweets, uh, brownie, um, cake. I mean, I mean, very, very rarely. That's just not my my drug of choice, so to speak. Uh, so when I want my, when I'm, when I want to overdo it with the calories, it's, it's something else. It's actually when I'm, when I'm really ready to have, to, to get loose with the diet is I just get a bigger bag of cashews. That's really, that's really, that, Lames, man, I, I end up that's what I want. What you don't like cashews, Diallo? What kind of, what kind of human don't like cashews? I mean, oh, you don't like cashews, cashews a bag but of cashews call, and raisins, man. I mean, yeah, water, I, really I, mean, I would say about, fruit. I said fruit. Like I, if I don't oh want candy, God. I get fruit. Watermelon. I don't really. Uh, yeah, I don't really. I'm, I don't do too much. I don't have a. I don't. What you eat? What you eat, Jerry? What you eat, Jerry? What you eat? Jolly Ranch. I mean, Diallo. Jolly Ranches and stuff. All that. No, I. I I'm a connoisseur. I don't eat the cheap shit. <laughs> but when it is time for me to indulge, I get me some Justin's organic peanut butter cup. That's number one. But they just came out a couple of weeks ago with these these uh, Justin's peanut butter. Uh, chocolate candy coated. Oh no, Justin's. Bite. Wait a minute now. Now Justin's. I'm with the, the Justin's maple almond butter. Uh, uh. Oh, like, I, I have an issue. I with never that. even paid attention to the. Now nah, you know. Man. Too late. You on the cashew side. You ain't coming over. No, here I, I, I. Oh, well, I, but that's but that's, like but that's like a peanut butter. But that's like a. I don't think Listen. that when I'm thinking of sweets. But that's my. I mean. Bro, You're okay, fair enough. Listen, okay, whatever. Well, I'm, I'm with that. that don't he really said agree. cakes. He was talking cakes and candies. I'm sweet. thinking that too. Oh, that's my shit. Oh, right not there. these. That's, that's, not that's not what I'm talking about. If you didn't, that's not if you didn't just tell about. me the name, I wouldn't even. I ate these, but I I didn't even know what Justin's was. But okay, I that's not even, what I'm. Oh, Justin, like I don't know. Justin's also has like an almond butter, peanut butter, uh, uh, spread line. Yeah, so you get that, that's that what I'm talking bananas about. Bananas or apples. Yeah, yeah. Hey y'all, one day we should look into the. We should look into all these. One day, we we should get into the politics of everything. Ain't here. no politics. That means it's ethical. That's ethical <laughs> consumption. Got the green it's USDA stamp. Friendly. That's ethical <laughs> consumption right there. 
So nah, I, we, yeah, we, I, we're going to have to critique I, our own people now. We got to critique our vegan people. And then whenever I'm in New York, I get done well donuts <laughs> every day. Shout out to done well in New York City. And then my wife took me to this crepe store in Los Angeles. Crepes. Man, listen. Crepes. Whatever, man. I don't speak the. the, the it's the not crepes. Pasta. It's crepes. Oh, what's either. those little roll things? I don't know. Are oh, you talking about yeah, taquitos? The, the uh, Latino one? The, the Latino. We almost oh. missed our plane messing around over there. But just let me tell you, boy, done well donuts. Whenever I'm in New York, air day. Without, so I go to Dunwell. I get my Justins, my Uncle Eddie's. Uncle Eddie's? Why you got all these brand names in your head, bro? Because, like I said, I'm used to the finer things. What Uncle Eddie's? Man, life is too hard. I'm on the front lines of the struggle. Uncle Eddie's Everybody cookies? Hating on me, man. I need my, my reprieves. Huh? Oh, Uncle Eddie's is, I didn't know he was, that's, that's Trader Joe's, right? No, they don't sell Uncle Eddie's at Trader Joe's. Oh, I ain't never. I I thought I saw these at Trader Joe's. He said he's bougie, man. Nah, said, what they sell these joints at? Now, Uncle Eddie's better give us a, a cut, uh, some donations or something. You ask, don't ask, because I can get into this. See, they probably gonna it's give like us y'all a talking fine. cards and ball they, they chasing. Be associated with when this it comes show, to give us vegan a, junk right. food, vegan sweets. Diallo, all these cooks they look trash, except the peanut butter cookie, and they don't even look soft. Peanut butter is my favorite. That's man, we I, didn't even get it. You know what? That remind we we didn't even get it. To, you know, Maggie Anderson came for us the other day, uh, <laughs> and and hit us with a privacy, hit us with a privacy joint for the hit video. You. you and I hit you, M, M, because she was she was Gigi was on the show. She hey, listen, I caught us. a stray. I caught a stray. <laughs> you she, are, was, she was <laughs> tight, and she and that's I said. All you. Hey, Diallo, Diallo, Maggie tried to handle him like Umar dropped the location to his uh, his baby mama. That's kind of how she was coming at Jared. Like you, she, she you, was like, I, I said a privacy. I got to know this privacy. They already know you, Maggie. I was like, they you're a you. public figure. You're giving <laughs> speeches and writing books. And it was because her picture was in the thumbnail. And I... Yeah, that was a little wild exchange. And then she hit us with the. Then she dropped her 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 medical condition in there, which is all due respect. I just I, I don't. I'm like, don't weaponize that against me like that. You came you came for me. I didn't I didn't. What is what does medical condition have to do with anything? Like what is like nobody was going at you for for, you know get I I wish all everybody well. I wish her well, but but I I didn't think that was fair to do, uh, but. Who's this unemployed know. scholar making crazy stuff? Who said who? Who who's soft, soft on, on Judaism? Judaism? Denouncing all religions, regardless of religious political positioning. What? Who's soft on I Judaism? Diallo, you highlighted that? No. No, it's, it's a, a super man. chat. It's automatic. Oh, Geechee. I'm not even looking at the numbers. My bad. I'm not looking at the numbers. Go ahead. Who's soft on Judaism? Where they do that at? Where they do that at? I don't know who that person is. What they send another five dollars and tell us more about it. than I do about Islam. Just scroll my freaking timeline. What's nah, they ain't watching people? Uh -oh. But I guess they're gonna make up something. You don't judge Islam by its adherence. In Judaism fact, in principles. fact, like I said, Judaism is the one that started all this bullshit. If not for Judaism, we wouldn't have Christianity or Islam. That's gonna be the that's the thumbnail right there. Judaism start all that, that bullshit. All Judaism set this bullshit off. Wait, what? All this theistic Abrahamic religions scourge. <laughs> like Diablo and his fans can't you really hear the argument. Now that's offensive. That's the first time I've been on this air and been offended. A lot of Protecting this is religion <laughs> from Diallo sounds like the Patriots defend the U.S. from legit. Oh wow! I feel like Pete, like Diallo and his fans, they got the same type of ears. Like no, they don't hear any nuance in the in the response. You could say what all, all you want, but I don't think y'all hearing anything that we're protecting like, religion from Diallo. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, as if. Man, I wouldn't worship a god that needed protection from me. <laughs> I mean, goddamn. Mm -hmm. Yo, that's wow. wild. Yeah, that's Diallo. Do Diallo got the same smoke for spirituality? But go ahead, Diallo. Diallo is yeah. religion for lazy people. <laughs> <laughs> Prove me wrong. 
<laughs> Yo. So so Diallo, tell me this real quick. If if one look at religion and spirituality as some type of crutch to get to maybe even where you might be, would you still discourage them from needing to wrestle with something? Because I tell you before, I think when Teal was on, how people grappling with death is uh, maybe a traumatic or personal experience. And I, I don't know if it's always important to like sit on that. So like, how, how do you engage people's mental health or people trying to hold on to something to cope with all the fucked up shit that's happening? I don't. I If someone's having some, it's a true psychological mental crisis, I will refer them to a professional. As far as this whole thing about people having issues and can't come to terms with death, the only thing worse than death is people exploiting death and creating institutions and billion dollar industries based on people's fear of death and oblivion. And another thing, the myth of an afterlife is one of the most obscene and absurd concepts humans ever imagined and made up. Because if you have eternal life, it automatically leads to the devaluation of life. Anything that you have forever in abundance, we devalue. The only thing that makes something precious to us and to humans is its rarity and its limited amount. I don't know. Only everything we see as truly precious, nah, this is, truly this is your... sacred are things that are in limited amount. So I think humanity <laughs> would do better and the humanity's treatment of one another would do better if we eliminated <laughs> the illusions of an afterlife. So you just real being quick, lazy, real Diallo, real quick, with your, real with your quick. lazy atheist religion. I value it more. I don't know if I want to do this, but I still have to. So when you think about the young people in Palestine who who use their conception of life and death and their religious belief to fight against their oppressor, that's what gives them some type of courage or comfort. You think you should take that away from those people? Take it away. I ain't trying to take nothing away from nobody. Or discourage them from, from coming to that conclusion or coming to I that. I wouldn't go over there and tell them people shit. But if they ask me, if someone asked me, I think people that. People don't be asking you and you be sharing with people struggle asking. against Zionism would be better served if they approached it from a re revolutionary radical point as opposed to from a theological point. I think that Palestinian people would be served better by secular rational leadership than theocratic or religious Islamist leadership. In my opinion. And I think the PLO, at least in its earliest uh, 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 manifestation, did better when it was more secularist. And, and, and then 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 uh, the theocrats who, who tend to, to take the lead. Same thing with the with the with in, in Iraq and in Iran. I think Iran was better off under communist and revolutionary rule than theocratic rule, even though I do support Iran's resistance to, to Western hegemony. See, I can support you and not agree with you on your delusions. <laughs> Un unemployed scholar, $2. Hell? Iranian women are engineers and scientists. What that got to do with any goddamn thing? <laughs> I don't know. What? See, this is the shit. You got a belief system that came from on high by the benevolent all knowing, and you got to pick this kind of shit to justify your Listen, shit. Man, the, you got to go there and up. find a, a Muslim, up, a female Muslim, because your shit is sexist as fuck. It represses and oppresses women. So you go find, and, and that's like when America goes and finds some dutiful, well accomplished, well mannered, well spoken Negro to show that America is not racist. Oh, here's a black engineer from an American, black American engineer. See, America's not racist. Here's an Iranian uh, fucking, here's a, an Iranian uh, sci female scientist. Oh, see, it's not a sexist religion. What the fuck is that? Yeah, it's, it, I, I got to I think I there's some of y'all some of y'all are, are in the spirit and and I'm, <laughs> I don't want to disrupt nobody's spirit but goddamn so Jay Hill, okay, nobody agreed with Ken. Look, I don't have to. I, I think honestly, I think <laughs> that's I just what Diallo was doing. Yeah, the, I just Diallo went out of so energy. Terrorism is on point. Diallo I'm, got. I'm gonna go. I, I gotta go get. I gotta go. Go. Uh, uh, get some some fuel for for one o'clock when i'll be back talking with my sister about about this horrific bob marley film but but i think what fuel you gonna get shout out to all the, all, all i'm the gonna money, get some justins some justins uh, uh some bitter ass unsweetened black coffee 
Hey, what's, what's yeah. all the slander about bitter coffee? I can't yeah. read that fast. I hope you're not expecting me to be. No, we're not. That. We just Jared said he got to go, so we were just running through the money. We was running up a check this night. That's I mean, you know, uh, appreciate y'all. I just, because I think there's, I think there's also more to be said, obviously, about everything, but th- about the the role of women in is, Islamic societies. I think there's, there'd be some pushback on Diallo's overall description of of the impact of the religion, regardless of what it's. Anyway, anyway, I'm just, I've just run out, of, I've just run out of energy, so I, I don't, yeah. I don't. But stomach, stomach we'll just keep, it. we'll just pick it up. We'll, we'll be back next week. Uh, please do like, share, subscribe, join the platform, support the, the platform. To Bro Diallo to and the Bitter Brothers. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Cashews I'm cool with that fruit. rebrand. Cashews, everything around me. Don't come at me with that old righteous. Well, when I, I like cashews, I don't like sweets. I, I do. And, 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 and now, I mean, perhaps. I, we all have it's every it's, Thursday, my Thursday evening apple wedge. I got, hey, I got I got a new name for us. Ball and G and a dry cookie. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> brothers that don't have at least one ball, vice. Ball and G with a dry oh, cookie. Oh, I have everybody. plenty of vices. You just didn't ask about the right ones. We were no, just we oh, God, this, like, that's it. I got so many candy. Funny show. Candy. Funny show. No well, you God, have no kids, bike. man. Talk about you asking us about your kids ain't gonna want nothing to do with you. It's like, yeah, we asked for candy. He gave us apple wedges and oranges and raisins for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I, I told you I like sour candy though. I like sour candy, salt, vinegar, oh. potato chips. I like right. I like and I explained to you the psychologic psychology behind that. Sour versus sugar. I explained now. I'll, I'll tell you off the air. I don't want to put you out there like that. <laughs> you know. Oh wow. <laughs> But I explained to you the psychology behind sour and bitters, the consumptions of sours and bitters. Now, I don't want to repeat myself, but you're not definitely, listening. Definitely, you ain't no herbalist on this platform. So don't lie. <laughs> say bitters ain't healthy. <laughs> what? I didn't say they were bad. I'm just saying, what do they do? And what is. The... But listen, I am not going to get back into that where you have to balance out. If that's what you got to do to achieve balance, brother, do it. Uh. Jared, take All us right, out, good dude. people. Yeah, Fly peace, everybody. Only if you're willing to fight for it, like Fred Hampton used to say, catch you rolling around these parts next week and throughout the platform in the interim. Peace, everybody. Catch Check you. Check out two time. blacks. Two Let's blacks, go. seven o'clock, one o'clock with us with sugar and a whole bunch of All other right. stuff coming up. Ring the bell. You you don't miss anything. Peace. You got, you got to, to earn your liberation. liberation.